gentlemen i am tank i'm jay valentine and this is the r&b money podcast yes it is the authority what mm-hmm. authority you know when they go to the high voice on all things all things r&b yeah in the building today who we got in the building today <sighs> this is a, a real family member yeah this yeah. is our real little yeah. brother yeah really taps in with the r&b really taps in with the r&b yeah. nuances yeah, he live it, he live he's, it. A finisher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. he's a finisher yeah yeah um he's a super producer super super producer yeah. also an artist there are very yeah. few people that who, are who's sensitive about their shit. he's sensitive about this shit. Ladies and gentlemen, our little brother in the building. Give it up for Cosign, y'all. Cosign. My brother. My brother. Palacio. My brother. Viva, hermanos. Palacio. Mi hermano, como esta? Ah, bien. Está bien. bien Está bien. bien. Bueno, señor, bueno. Bien, señor. Ya tu, tu, uh, el color. Uh, muy guapo, señor. Uh, well, you know. El color, así. Me, with mi madre de Panamá y mi padre de Guatemala. Sí, It's sí, sí. It's only right that I... Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, come... R&B sexified. Sí, palabra, palabra. <laughs> you know, sí, un sexy, ¿ah? Sí. Eh? Bueno, bueno, un, bueno. Un poquito sexy, ¿ah? ¿eh? Vamos, <laughs> vamos a hablar inglés porque uh, J. Valentine, él no, él no tiene el... No habla. No, no tiene español. Habla, no, pero po- nada. poquito. No, 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 nada, nada, nada. Valentine, habla poquito Fuck español. No. <laughs> ok, no, okay. Nigga. No. Now Shit. You, y'all niggas come on back now. <laughs> come on. Come on. Real this back on in. Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, man, thank you, brother, for pulling up, oh, man. man. You know, this is this is a necessity. Come on. Um, man. you know, it wasn't a matter of if, just a matter of when. Of when. You know what I'm saying? We, yeah. we, we, we get the we get the bro ham. Well, what I what I tried to do was Tell not be too about. thirsty, right? Because right. as soon as I seen it, it was like, oh, hey, oh. And it was like, Coach, calm down, bro. They, they gotta Coast. get Jamie out the way. They got <laughs> Coast is over everywhere. So what you thinking? You thinking next week? You thinking, we got, we get what? That? Like, like, what you thinking? Like, tell me exactly the time, the time frame. Bro, I had, I had to I had to reel it back, not be yeah. so thirsty, let it happen. And shout out to my sister mm-hmm. who, you know, she saw a couple guests and was like, okay, it's time now. They <laughs> she didn't told got, you. They didn't got, yeah, she telling me who on They got Eric yeah. been on there. I seen hit make on. It's time. <laughs> it's time. Did you call Tank yet? And then, and then sent me pages of talking points. Shout out to Nay. You know wow. what I'm saying? Oh, My sister. Not playing. What? Not playing with the opportunity yeah, that the co-side needs to be I rock with that. Woo. I rock with that. That's yeah, good. She hold me down. She's a huge fan of the podcast. Huge. Yo, what's her favorite episode? I think her favorite is Steve Mackey. Nice. You know what I'm saying? I think nice. she just loved the insight. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And, and Great episode. Yeah, yeah. But with you brothers, man, I got to give y'all brothers y'all flowers too first because being a L.A. transplant, you know what I'm saying? It's all about choosing your friends wisely. Mm. And the divine brotherhood council that has come from both of y'all down through the years yeah. has been clutch. You know what I'm saying? Because... Historically, I've been a wild cowboy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and sometimes, sometimes Ooh. unassuming, but a wild cowboy. Yeah. And especially when I think about my brother Jay, man, the man didn't talk me off the ledge mm. so many times, man. Yeah. And then when I think about the Enrique Dragon period, when I wanted to get out there as an artist, the encouragement to let it fly. Let it fly. Let it fly, let it man. Fly. Have, I, wanted you, you know, I wanted you to be the, the dragon uninhibited. Man, yeah. bro. You know? so, they got a new show about you now. Yeah, yeah. House <laughs> of Dragons. <laughs> no shit. Like, it's, it's House, a thing. House of Dragons. <laughs> uh, I think you're just too early. You were too early. I may or may not be a ghostwriter on that show. You know what I'm saying? I may or may not be it's a ghostwriter. There's many dragons on there. <laughs> Take your pick. They got black dragons. <laughs> they got black dragons. <laughs> man, Negro dragons, man. <laughs> yeah, but no, nah, I, I just wanted to put that on record and just said I appreciate you brothers, man, because, oh, man, you know, even y'all showing up to the wedding, thank you, singing, and, man, I, just, I, I could go on all day, you know what Yeah, I'm no, saying? I did more than sing. I was thinking about, like, trying to figure out some type of invoice for <laughs> for what I ended up having to do. Uh, Yo, you had to wing it. You, to had, make, to, you had some, some technical difficulties. It was technical difficult. People didn't show up. Man. It was like, so where's the DJ? What DJ? C- chords was missing. The I DJ that's supposed to I play this. DJ. 
well, do you think you can? I, you know what? For my brother, I absolutely can. Man. And what's the going out song? Oh, you don't have one. All right, cool. Give me the microphone again, <laughs> Phil. Uh, do the thing. We'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had to usher the people into, you know, the... the not, not only did you usher them, but then you gave them a few bars walking in, which was always pleasant. As a yeah. Chicagoan, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As people walking by, I feel like you gave Jeff a few bars. And snacks. And snacks. <laughs> and snacks. Don't nobody sing in snacks but me. You know what I'm saying? Yo, and it's so funny because listening to my family prepare to come to L.A. for the first time, right? It's a lot of Panamanians that came to Los Angeles for the first time. And they like, you know, we have to get ready to dress like potato salad because this is a real celebrity wedding. Marco, we're coming. And this is a real celebrity wedding. We're ready. So it's just like, guys. You got to dress like potato salad? Oh, yeah. You know, that's slang. That's Panamanian slang right there, man. What does that mean? Oh, that means you fly. If you like, dress like potato salad. Oh, man, you got on no so colors, like man. The color, yeah, the you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. You pop it. Yeah, yeah. Potato salad. We wouldn't come dressed like potato salad, Marco. Hmm. I'm like, okay. I'm going to have to use that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I think I'm going to let y'all have that you know one. I, was on that, <laughs> I think I'm going to let y'all have you know, I was on that stage. Hey, I'm not really a potato salad guy, man. When Jay, Jay hit me like this nigga, what you have on? Nigga? You know I had that potato salad I'm on. Just <laughs> like potato you know what I had on. Salad. With them freshly cut hard-boiled eggs on top of it. Little, see? little paprika half You see where he's going to go with it. He's going to turn into a full song. Hey. <laughs> Potito Stali. All right. Man. Um, you're family to us, but that's not how we rock. Um, we want to we wanna dig into the beginning mm-hmm. of, of Cosign. Mm-hmm. We want to dig into the beginning of Marcos. The, be, the yeah, beginning of the Marcos. Be, the beginning, like... Where was the day and time where you either made the decision that this is what I want to do or somebody told you, hey, this is what you should be doing. Mm. And, and to add to that, to mm-hmm. give you some more talking, mm-hmm. talking mm-hmm. space, mm-hmm. what was your influence to even get to that? Dang, man. I got to say the influence, man. I got made fun of for this, bro. I got made fun of in high school for this, man. I mean, no, in college. Uh, well, first, it's all credit to my mom, the late Perla Celestine Johnson. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Perla, my yeah. mom. Salute to moms, man. Oh, Absolutely. man. Salute, 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 salute man. We definitely, Absolutely. moms held it down, yo, for real. Um, single black mother. West side of Chicago, Maywood, Broadview to be specific. Um, originally from Panama. Mm-hmm. And my ain't play no games. You know, what I'm not going to do is lose my son to gang violence. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't raise a, a, a disrespectful child. Um, and she just really instilled education and practice. Hmm. Those were like cornerstones. So, so was she a musician? Wasn't a musician. My grandfather used to sing solos in church. You know what I mean? Okay. Pops, he's originally from Jamaica. We call him Papa. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, um, but it was just like, the way I can I can protect my child is to always keep him busy. Mm-hmm. So it was saxophone, it was piano, it was baseball, basketball. It was conjunto típico, right? Which is Panamanian dance class on the weekend. You can't dance. Wait, 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 wait. They have Panamanian dance what? class in Chicago? What? You can't dance. Uh, the, look, look, look. The name of the uh, club was called Amapec, right? And I used to be have to be in parades. Like, I used to be like, Mom, Mom, you're going to, they're going to beat me up. They're going to beat me up. <laughs> if I'm doing, like. So you was doing Carnival in Chicago. <laughs> what? You hear that music? Come on. Fin, thin, thin, fin, thin, thin, fin, thin, thin. Yeah. On behind your back, you got the yeah. sombrero on, the chakra, yeah. the panabrisa. Yeah. What? I'm so excited. What you, what you won't do. <laughs> he want to go. He want to go party right now. <laughs> what? It was a little club called the Fuego Fuego. Fuego Fuego. Yeah. I know what that means. <laughs> it's on fire. Yeah. 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 It was a club yeah. called yeah. the Fuego Fuego. Fuego Fuego. And I remember being at them parties, man. And it might be like 12, 1 a.m. And the kids section, we'd already did our dance. So now we just on the side, sleep, tired. 
and it's just some real salsaing going on. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you see pants with the sides open, and me and my yeah. cousin whisper, like, you see her leg? Yeah. You see her thigh? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just like, yeah. yeah, bro. So she really was big on the culture. You will know about your Panamanian roots um, and be well-rounded as well. And eighth grade, I started playing the drums at church. I was the, the third string drummer. You know what I'm saying? That happens. So wait, they that have. Happens. So yeah. you got man, like a like sports. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And really, you so just, you was the backup backup drummer. Absolutely. Third, like third string quarterback. Third string. So you got the sanctuary choir, mm -hmm. the youth choir, what? and then when the kids choir come up, goes, and they'd be like. All these blessings come from God. It's either it's either it's either the junior choir or before before the praise and worship was a big thing mm -hmm. as it is right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You would do like the beginning of service. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what the third string guy was. But once service started getting serious, then the guys would yeah, yeah, scoot, right, okay, scoot buddy, you off okay, everybody. Buddy, here, Marcos. Come on. Okay, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on. Now, the best part was when the lead drummer uh, and the second drummer, now this only happened a few times, when the lead drummer and the second sick. drummer, they ain't there. <laughs> they so both now, got gigs. Oh, oh, baby. Oh, I'm about to shout. Oh, so you get baby. to play for the, for the, for the big for choir. Yeah, I'm about to mess saying? the whole service off up. Beat, <laughs> off beat and loud. <laughs> off beat and loud. You see the choir director just hitting me with this like, <laughs> I'm trying to find it. Ah. And how old you know, you said eighth grade? It's eighth grade. It's eighth grade. It's, I'm 13. I'm 13 in this time. I was nice in eighth grade. And so, I'm yeah, drums. I'm playing sax. I'm playing drums. I'm playing keys. And then high school was like all of them kind of coming together. I was I was rapping. I was in an R&B group, and we had no lead singer. What? Y'all sang unison? <laughs> I think the group probably only lasts about 90 days. Okay, okay. Because it was one guy that just every week was just selling wolf tickets is what we call them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, we're going to be shooting a video. and We got a, we got a auditions for the video girls coming. He was in the group or he was the manager? He's in the group. And Oh, but he was managing too, though. He was, right, right, yeah. He was, he was selling y'all the wolf tickets? Yeah, selling us the wolf tickets. None, the, none of the things that he ever talked about ever came true. In the group with you, selling the wolf tickets? <laughs> And, and it was just it's another nigga that was just like selling everybody. <laughs> no, he in the group, and, and okay. kind of and kind of is claiming lead singer, but I can't give him that because you can't sing. None of us, <laughs> none, none of us can really. You know, I was trying to be <laughs> Joe to see. I'm trying to be you know Coast Vante in the group. You know what I'm saying? Producer, yeah, yeah. be in the back, and so yeah, that was a disaster. But it was shots up. All of this stuff was just getting shots up. I went to a Catholic all boy high school, same school that uh, Isaiah Thomas went to, St. Joe's, mm -hmm. Evan Turner as well. And uh, man, I played in the LaSallean Instrumentalist. I, I won the uh, Louis B. Armstrong Jazz Award. So I was cutting up, man. I was playing at youth services, starting to get a little, little chill. So this is all for you, just being a purist in terms of just being a musician. Yeah, and just, just loving it and just doing you're trying it for... You find the music. You just, yeah, you just find yeah, the music. I'm, just, I'm having a good time. What I, what I noticed was rapping, the, I wasn't a huge fan of the attention because Chicago, they will fry you. The jokes that my friends have were so lethal that getting on that stage in the spotlight was a little hot. So it was like, how can I be close to it but not all the way in producer? Hmm. And when I saw that, that made me just want to just know all of the different aspects about music you know, and so yeah. so was your mother your first investor? Um, like, because obviously, for, as, as a being a producer, mine was for you sure. You gotta have yeah. equipment. Yeah, my mama bought that BPM four keyboard PV. Yeah. yeah. Well, so for the keyboard, uh, I kind of just gotta just lead that off. How I got my first keyboard uh, that ain't that ain't nobody business. Uh, what I, I mean, how you wanna tell us? You know what happened. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's you, had to, a, you had to sell. You had to sell something. I had to sell nothing, but you know, I just you had to lay uh, something down to get it. <laughs> I just had to get uh, creative, right? To get that Yamaha you, motif. You had to get seven. nasty. Okay. <laughs> Did oh, you had the nasty. motif seven too? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you had to get nasty. Two thousand one. You got nasty. You had to get nasty. You got nasty for it. Two thousand. I see your shirt. I see your shirt. You did something nasty for for, for a piano. Ah, <laughs> mo a, a piano motif. Man. Yeah, a motif. Was it weighted keys? And, 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 did you get the weighted keys? I didn't get too? the. I got the seven. I got the seven. Okay, okay. You got. But it. it was crazy because I remember my mom being like, "Marco, how did you get that?" And I had to tell one of my homies to say that he bought it for me. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, look, my mama, because I was like, I was, one of the guys in the group was a producer. And so I told mom, I was like, mom, he got a deal. And because I've been spending that time in the studio with him, he just got me my own keyboard. Yeah. So she's like, oh my, really, Marco? I have to, I have to at least say, call him so I can say thank you. Oh, <laughs> so I had to finesse, call him and say, hey, uh. Yeah, act like you got me this. Yeah, my mom about to call you and say thanks. You know what I'm saying? For the keyboard that and you got me. And how old are you me. at this time? This is senior year of high school. Like 17. 17, 18, yeah. yeah. teeth. Senior year in high school. Got a little. What did you do, man? I can't talk about okay. it. Okay. I mean, the statute of limitations is probably over. Probably over, huh? Yeah. You grown now. You can't go to jail for something you did. <sighs> in high school? In high school. But I, but, I, but I gave back, though. This is what I did. Oh, he stole it. <laughs> I gave back to the organization. Uh, <laughs> organization. <laughs> oh, shit. I gave back to the organization. Man. He, t- he took it from the Boys and Girls Club. Nigga, you wow. He stole the church. The church, church equipment. <laughs> you stole the church's keyboard? <laughs> Did you steal the church's keyboard? Definitely was not the church. But, uh, you yeah. stole it. Yeah, he stole it. It was an organization. It was, a, it, was a, it was a, it was something I'm not, because it's funny because I was talking to somebody and I was thinking about that. Like, wait, how did I? And I was like, oh my God. That was the one time in my life where I got active. Oh my God. Had to have it. Had to. Mm. And um, and so I, re- I, I think about how sometimes in the past I've been judgy on how people get to it. Not really putting that mirror on myself and really looking at my story through a fine tooth comb. Like, mm. hey, you had to do some hustling too, sir. Yeah. And I was sure. like, oh, all right, cool. I got to relax. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so you. Kind of poked the hole in the condo. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna do that throughout throughout the whole pod. Just prepare yourself. This is before. This is before. <laughs> he gonna shank you with some wild shit. Just this every is, now and then. This is before we start getting uh, start getting moist <laughs> and, and, and slippery. Oh, but uh, so man. you start making your first tracks on on, on that motif. Yeah, uh, and then I got an MPC 2000 right after from a MPC mentor of mine, a guy by the name of The Sick One. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, too, because I just knew he was going to give it to me. He got a 4,000, and I was just like, oh, but, oh The 2,000 mine. And he was like, nah, that's 1,000. And I was like, sir, please. And he's like, nah. <laughs> so that's when I started. Shout out to Q Billa, man. It's a guy, West Side Q Billa, man. He bought my first track. He bought three of them for $200, $600. I think my mama might have gave me the other four. Yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. I sold three beats for two hundred dollars to Q Builder. And um, man, the rest was history. Once that NPC and that motif was together in that basement, oh, we on. So listen, before we before you can go any further, mm-hmm. we have to take a shot. We gotta take a shot. And this shot is to not disappointing the investors. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yo mama, yo mama, my daddy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A As, this is just my, my listen, my OG, Bill Haney, father of Devin Haney, world champion. This is his saying. Do not disappoint the investors. Wow. Straight up. Wow. This is why Straight we're here. Up. Wow. This Straight is up. why we're here. Do not we did not disappoint the investors. the investors. Wow. Your mama gave you that extra foe, man. The extra foe, like I used to drive wow. my mama crazy, yo. <laughs> like I would be as an only child. I'd be in my room. I remember one time I got out the shower and I was supposed to put my clothes on and come outside to my family was in the living room. But it was like, ain't nothing stopping me from going to the NBA. And I had a little rim in my room. Wait, wait, wait. wait and I just wait. threw my towel you just, off. You just talked about a whole bunch of instruments and playing instruments. And now you're jumping out. I still out. hoop dreams. Hmm. Hoop, Man. Ball is life. Oh so... God. I was on my all star team. I made all star in elementary school. Niggas and and so, good, so at that young age, I remember that. I'll never forget that day. I came out the shower and said, No, nah, I'm going to the league. Threw my towel off <laughs> and started training butt ass naked in my room. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole naked. I'm sitting there going the fuck off. And my cousin walked in the room. <laughs> Somebody. And mid, my mid, cousin Jan. Mid Euro. Mid. <laughs> And I remember seeing her and like tearing. Her too. Oh, yeah, my cousin Jazz. My cousin Yasmin. Yasmin. I, I remember seeing her and I just instantly started tearing up because I knew she was going to tell. <laughs> and I saw her. I was like, no, 
no, no. And she was like, <laughs> you in here playing basketball at <laughs> Mom! <laughs> My Auntie Pearl, Marcus. My family call me Marcus. <laughs> Marcus in here playing basketball naked. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, no, oh, no. Shit. no, please no. Because <laughs> I used to get so distracted and then get engulfed. You know what I'm saying? I get distracted and get engulfed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah. that's worse than Leon in above the rim hey, playing basketball without a ball. <laughs> just, <you know. laughs> just a, Bro, the just only child, the, the only child life is so crazy because you're so lonely, bro. You're so lonely. You're so in your head, and it's like you create this world of just like being by yourself. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And you got your imaginary friends and the reasoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Work, like, work, work, yeah. work. Your imaginary friends that you were hooping with, were they naked too? Oh, no, they weren't. Hey, hey man! <laughs> just, oh, <fuck>. no, <laughs> no, no, they weren't. Just want to know what's going on. No, they weren't. On. So they were clothed, fully but, clothed? But I do remember. And you were naked? <laughs> well, I, was, I, I was by myself working out. But as I'm thinking about it, I do remember the lineup. Mahoney, Whitey, oh, Chubb. Oh, had a lineup. I was the two guard. Fast Michael ball. Jordan. That's ball. And Ricky was the point guard. Ricky. Ricky! <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. I'm open. <laughs> Hit me in the post. And then what you do is you throw it off the wall. <laughs> no, nah, man. You throw it off the wall nah. and catch it. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Nah, and when you want to pass it to somebody else, you throw it off the wall <sighs> again. Every time you catch it, you a different nigga. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm open. Hey, listen, listen. To any of you, <laughs> to any of you people out there that are... If you, if, if you have kids or if you're, if you're going to choose to have children... Have more than one. Yeah, because that only child don't, shit. Don't let, don't let your son be in the room by himself um, playing basketball. Move close to the cousins. Move close to some cousins. No, 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 no. Give him, give him some siblings, yeah, man. We need a day-to-day -day operation. <laughs> and then so my mom would hear me doing God knows what in the room and shut it down. And that's when practice began. Because she'd just be like, Marco, sit. When the last time you practiced piano? You ended up jumping around. And we lived in an apartment. So mm -hmm. you had people that yeah, would call the police yeah. Yeah. and do all kind of wild shit. Cause they heard, and then I, you know, pick up the piano or saxophone, and next thing you know, nigga, two three hours will go by, and yeah. I wouldn't even really think about it. Yeah. And she was a head nurse of a dialysis unit at Loyola Hospital, and she would do her schedule. She always had to do that weekly schedule, so that was a good time for her to zone out and knock out the schedule for everybody. While you while were I was practicing, yeah. okay. you know what I'm saying. Okay. And then the Disney movies came out, so I always had the play alongs. To all the Disney movies. So what Steve Mackey was talking about doing the Disney movies. I was like, why can I relate? I don't right. want to have to be able to relate to this, but I remember right. the days right, 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 right. I had my horn like dee do dee do 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 dee do dee do dee And my mom used to just be like, you know what I'm saying? Them was the the early years. And her favorite, uh well, one of her favorite musicians was Kenny G. Mm. So I'm in the in the crib. Yeah. And that was my style. Black women love Kenny G. Oh my god, they love Kenny G. Kenny G. John B. Yeah. <laughs> and what's her name? Uh, uh, Michael Bolton. And Michael mm -hmm. Bolton. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Michael Bolton. Love that Michael Bolton. So when I got to FAMU, <clears throat> and there's 60 freshmen. Oh, don't leave out Michael players. McDonald. Oh, don't yeah. leave. You, we will not leave out Michael Come on. McDonald. That's a very okay. so. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. His voice is so unique. <laughs> he was cold. Yeah, he, was. he was cold. In real life. Oh my god. In real life. Okay. You were fam you. Fam you. Fam you. Oh my goodness. So how right? you get to fam you? So I was in a program called Upward Bound. And that was the college prep local program at the community college triton college mm -hmm. that was for the poor smart kids mm. right and because my mama made too much money to for me to be in the program i never got stipends they used to get stipends every week but my cousin she was in the program and she her people my uncle they get put in a good word it threw me in there it's mm -hmm. just like, you can be here, but you can't get paid. Ah, your you. mama be cooking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we used to do college tours 
all around. So I've seen Duke, and I really wanted to go to Duke for a second until I got there. It was like, oh, y'all tighten the ass. I, I, I love the basketball team, but y'all look tight in the ass for what I'm looking for coming from St. Joe's, which yeah. is like Catholic, all boy. You know, like, you ready to turn up? I, I need it. I need yeah. to be dipped in black again. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I went to black from preschool to eighth grade, and then my high school was pretty diverse. But then it was like I need black again. Yeah, and so and I know and I knew I needed music too. And they're like, well, you talking about the best black band in the country? You talking about Fam You? Are you sure that's the best black band? Not even. Oh, yeah, not even yeah, yeah, y'all go ahead and kick that off. Not even close. Y'all go ahead because kick that off. even you sure when you look, southern name. They don't want no smoke. I'm just asking. No, I'm just I'm just asking. I mean, because Kendrick The human it, human jukebox, no? I mean they're cute. Ooh. They're cute. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? That's smoky. Hey, was it Sonic Boom or something like that? Ooh. All right. And look, they're dancer girls. Woo. Pristine. Hey. But when it comes to Talk to talk. Sound. Talk to talk. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's the marching one hundred. Ooh. And so y'all who they made the movie off of? Of course. And our band would have been in the movie. But they wrote in the script that we lose and we don't lose. So fuck that movie. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck that drumline movie. What? Not in real life, but that's how our band director felt. You know what I'm saying? We don't lose. We don't lose. So Y'all got to change that script. So uh, they change. Yeah. You're not going to create that. Nah. Nah, nah. You're not nah. going to tell the people that. Nah. No, no, we don't. That's, that's going... not the energy mm -mm. that mm -mm. you're going to put out about us. Respect. And then, then they rewrote it and made it a tie. And it was like, oh, y'all think it's a game. <laughs> And me being, I'm like, God, I want to be in the movie so bad. Like, right. band director, please. Oh, right. so this yeah. is when you're in college. This is when I was in really college. Really, in real life. So, and, there were, and there were a lot of players from our band that's a couple one-offs that they use, like the sticks, the actual Nick Cannon hands in the band was one of our drummers at FAM. His oh, hands wow. was one of the So there still were, and then I think they ended up using Southwest DeKalb, but their band director is from FAMU. You know what I'm saying? Saxophone player, too. So, yeah, it was, it was deep. It was really deep. and That I, really was happening. Two, you talking about 2001? It's that audition I So, band is damn near gangs. Yeah. What? Yeah. And there's gangs inside of every section, too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, of course, you got the white t-shirt on. Okay. You're a crab, you know? And on top of being a crab, I was the weakest link out of 60 freshman saxophone players. And I'm just like, oh, so y'all didn't play football and basketball and had girlfriends. And they just played dude, instruments. Y'all just really was about that. So that's where I learned about even practicing. Like, Coach, you don't practice for I didn't even I didn't even get a scholarship the first semester. My scholarship didn't happen until the second semester. So I really had to get yeah. my shit together. Yeah. But it was a culture shock for me because I just was the man at home. But then I get to fam, and these guys is playing Flight of the Bumblebee. <laughs> Where am I at? Where am I at? And I'm st there's Nicki Minaj Anaconda does not happen without fam. Bum, bum, Where are we going too fast? Don't say that. Yeah, 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 we ain't even got to that yet. Yeah, we got to that. We don't want to hear about come that. Come on, play. Take your time. We're going to get there. Take your time. Stay back. Stay back. Drive slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still poor. Yeah, we still poor. We still poor. But then that was a that was a forward flash of how that happens because mm -hmm. I learned about arrangement. I learned about blend. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I learned so much musicality. Mm -hmm. Just being there, being in the jazz band, being in the symphonic band. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Having a, a teacher say, Yeah, you playing saxophone, but I want it to to hit me like a French horn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's a different mouthpiece, that's a different armature. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's the real training. I'm taking class. Piano, I'm taking voice, I'm taking brass techniques. I was a music education major while I was at FAM. Took four semesters of theory with Dr. Horn. So this is like damn near music rocket science, yo. Mm. And it's the best shit ever. And um, after my sophomore year, my mom gets diagnosed with cancer. Wow. Now, after my freshman year, my mom gets diagnosed with cancer. After my sophomore year, my mom passes away from cancer. And that's when I moved back to Chicago from Tallahassee. And that was just such a crazy time because I never really wanted to go to college like that. College wasn't really my twist. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a rock star, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or go to the league or definitely not school. But that was my mom's first and last wish. She said, Marcos, Marco, my job as a parent is done when you graduate college, Marco. 
And even though I won't be there with you in the physical, Marco, please, this is on her deathbed. These are last words. So I registered for Columbia College, Chicago, September 9th, and my mom passed away September 10th. And I remember reading her my schedule, and it, I, that's how I know she was like, all right, cool. He's registered for school. He's going to school. I'm out. And three years later, I'm in my, uh, my counselor's office, and I'm like, I cannot believe I'm about to graduate. I can't yeah. believe it. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, and it's crazy with, you know, with this year being on Mother's Day. Wow. It's Your three graduation years, was on Mother's Day? Three years later? Wow. I walked wow. out the office, walked to the president's <laughs> office for the first time in three years of being at Columbia. See the lady there. I say, ma'am, um, I hate to speak to the president. She said, the president's booked through the summer. I said, well, you about to watch me sleep on the floor in this office until I talk to him. And she had a headset on. A Hispanic lady, I remember her taking her headset off like, <laughs> what you're not going to do is just sleep in the office? <laughs> uh, how, how can I help you? And I told her everything. And she just so happened to be a single mother, Hispanic, overstood where I was coming from. And I said, I need to speak. I need to say something at graduation. I know I'm not the valedictorian. She cried her eyes out, asked me to leave, made some calls. To this day, I'm the only person to speak at Columbia College graduation, not be the valedictorian. Wow. I dedicated that degree to my mama. That was my you know first what? Grammy. Come on, man. Come That's on, my man. first Grammy. Oh, he's still flossing, too. Wow. That's my first Grammy. Yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's not a floss because I ain't never won a Grammy. <laughs> I, got, I got nine nominations. Oh, you niggas is in the same. <laughs> no, I won. Here you go. Yeah. I got nine nominations. I got nine nominations and a win. People be Jennifer Hudson won. Church. Therefore, I won. You did. You did. R&B album of the year. Show me the goddamn Grammy then. I'll show you the certificate. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you my driver's license they, too. They, they hate on <laughs> they, they hate. They, was it my birth certificate? They was hating on us. You we got to change the rule now, though. They changed the rule now. So now R&B album can get. If you, are, if you are a part of it, you can then get it. That should yeah. be retroactive. It should. That should be retroactive. Make the call. You know I am. Make the call. I need my you hardware, need, you need baby. I could go right there next to the R&B money thing. Until then. <laughs> you don't respect it. That's what you're doing. Come on, Jay. What, bro? <laughs> At least you should respect I know. I know. I know. <laughs> that's crazy. Anyway, that's what friends are for. <laughs> right, so, right. No. So, this, this is why you're so sharp. Because <laughs> we're, we're friends like Jay, who needs it? You know Shout saying? out to Jay Hood, though. Oh. <laughs> Shout wow. out! Shout, shout out! To out. The, shout out to the E got herself. Wow. Shout out! You got shout all. Out. You got all of them wow. things. I mean, you know this I mean, Chicago. I can't miss that shout out. I mean, Man, that's respect. Um, so, so that was like the beginning of like what I felt was like my first Grammy. Like you really couldn't tell me shit. I went through college. I graduated. I dedicated that degree to my mama. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like now I'm making mixtapes in the basement with hood, hood. Brothers and so you graduate, gangsters. and now you doing street music for paper bag money. And teaching. I, look, and teaching too. Teaching, teaching what? what? So the head of my department, I brought him three contracts. One was to, I think, Red Zone, Red something. Might be like Tricky them in Atlanta. Oh, it's Tricky them. yeah. The yeah. other one was Barry Hankerson. I forget who the other one was. But I brought him all three contracts, right? And I still had that basketball mentality. Like, all right, it's time for me to go to the NBA. Mm-hmm. And he was like, he kind of saw the thirst on me a little bit and was like, Coach, don't feel like you got to run to L.A. right away. If you want to stay home and get your stuff together, you know, get your house in order, you can do that. You know, mm -hmm. and, it, and if you want, you can teach here. I was like, teach what? He said, I've never had a student like you. Make up a class. Left out his office because I was like, he might take that back. He, I don't even think he know what he said to me. <laughs> Left out the office. Took my favorite three syllabus from all five years of college and wrote a curriculum called Hip Hop Beat Making and then brought it to him. At Columbia University. Columbia College, Chicago. Yeah. So this Lena Waithe, this Jeremiah Kanye, yeah. this is downtown. And uh, he made a couple of edits and they offered me another class. And I, you know, I want you to teach my other class, Producing Recorded Music 3, and I'm going to teach four. So I taught two classes, Hip Hop Beat Making and Producing Recorded Music 3 for two wow. years. That's dope. And you're what, 21? 23. 23. It's a bar. I'm 23. And I remember the first day of class, 
it was at the Rhythm Cafe. It was a, uh, a studio in Chicago where we had the class, and they hadn't opened it up yet. So the students are there. I'm there, but I'm dressed like how I was dressed last semester. And they're like, man, where the fuck the teacher at, man? How the fuck is they ain't open up the building? Bop, 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 man. This is, and they just going crazy. And I'm sitting there looking like. And then the guy comes, opens the door, and they were like, oh, man, what's your name? I was like, yeah, I'm the teacher. Y'all cussing my class, you're going to get an F. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's, and it's homework on the first day because I don't like y'all attitude. This is how we walked in on their ass. And every week I used to play all the beats I made all week and just punch them in the nose. And they'd be like, <laughs> Professor, you did this this week? Because I was, man, I was in so the, the beats city. So the beats is tough. Beats they is tough, tough at this point. They tough, so you're not bro. weak, though. It's not like you're a teacher and your beats is weak. Right. Nah. The only need to teach like, your beats be weak. No, no need to teach your beats is weak. You want us to rap over this? No. And not, not only is the beats not weak, but I'm inviting damn near all the guests from Kanye College Dropout to clap because it's Chicago. So yeah. here come GLC and Lupe Fiasco. Here come uh, Prolific, you know, oh, Rhyme Fest. Crazy. I'm bringing all of the guys to my class. And we had a mixtape at the end of the semester. Like it was uh, Mikey Rocks from the Cool Kids was in my first class. Yeah. So to this day, Mikey be like, Professor Cosign. Like a lot of people know me as Professor Cosign. No, no, no. He was a student. He's my first student too. Professor Cosign. Professor Cosign. Still to this day. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think that's, that that's where I really put together that's the. A far, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's where I got the formula. You know what I'm saying? You might have been our. You might be our first professor yeah. that we've had on the show, bro. Right? Yeah. All right. We've had a sir. We had a sir. You, I'll you take a mean? personal sip today. Definitely you know got a sir. We had a sir and a professor. Yeah, yeah. sir Ray I mean, Park. I'm a doctor. Mm -hmm. Oh shit. Church. So a doctor you know. of music. Oh, you got the honorary honorary doctor. Doctor. Church from where? Harvest. Harvest. Okay. Hey, out of Dallas. I'm sipping one more time. Listen, man. You, you just I'm sipping sip. one more time. To the, to, 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 to the well-schooled church. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just us <clears throat> in the street. Nigga. And you know what? <laughs> <laughs> God, I feel I feel safe around you, brother. Dog. What you doing? I do feel you, safe around you. You've been with me. You know what I'm saying? You've been with me. You, you know what I mean? Hey, you know what I mean? You touched man. the soil. Man. You touched the soil, man. man. You, you know you've been in the streets with me, man. Man, now, that's <laughs> crazy. Tough. That's crazy. So, you're the professor with the fire beats, completely tapped in, completely immersed in the Chicago culture, music culture. Mm -hmm. Where does the break? Where does the break happen? Because the, mm -hmm. from everything you've just said, like, you're ready. You're ready for the big leagues. You're ready for the NBA. When does someone recognize your potential in, in draft? Uh, I'm moderating a panel at school, right? And so we have guest speakers that come in to talk to the students. One of those guest speakers was a guy by the name of CL, and he had a DJ pool called Digiwax. Digiwax, mm -hmm. wow. And so on the panel, he was talking that shit. And I'm like, afterward, I went up to him like, yo, you was talking that shit, man. How long you in town? He's like, I'm just here for the night, man. You know, I'm like, well, if it's cool. I, I want to take you to the west side, get you some Uncle Remus chicken. I don't know if you had Uncle Remus, but that mild sauce is crazy. I know we know him for Harold's, but as a West Sider, Uncle Remus, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then my studio was on Sacramento. Drove him to Uncle Remus, drove him to the studio, played him some beats. He said, all right, cool. So on that panel, I know I said I got Digiwax, but I'm actually partners with Mims. And he's coming off of This Is Why I'm Hot, yeah, yeah. which is yeah. a global smash. 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 Mm -hmm. and smash. We don't need the big producers that the labels are introducing us to. We need just something different. I'm not looking for the name. I just want a different sound. And your shit is different. And so I'm going to fly you to Atlanta to work with Mims. So I'm like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? So the next day, my homie comes to the studio and say, you ain't the hottest producer in Chicago, bro. It's another nigga that got you. And I said, the next day? Next day, one of my homies just, I said, all right, okay. Well, play me the beat that says that he's nicer than me. And he played the beat, and the light bulb went off on my head. I said, oh, he liked the beat because it's a hook on it. And I don't put hooks on my beats. I just be make, I'm a beat maker. Mm -hmm. I said, look, that beat that you love, put that on my, on my desktop. 
in the studio. And tomorrow I'm going to come in here and make that beat daddy. Okay? Because you got me fucked up. Came in the next day. <laughs> made the beat daddy. But then set a hook on there. Move if you want to, if you want to, if you want to move. Move if you want. Just put something there. Yeah. The Mims record. Sent that to Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. He jumped right on it. That's my first goal. It's my first goal record. Wow. My first seventy five percent competitive. Com just being competitive. Yeah, don't don't come in here and tell me I'm not the nicest in this. Are you? Are you yeah. dumb? Are you stupid or are you dumb? Are you stupid or are you dumb? Yeah. I was so offended. Yeah. I took a, like Jordan and that Netflix. I took offense to that. You, you took it personally. I took offense to that. Yeah. Don't say that, bro. Yeah. And went crazy, bro. And then I ended up executive producing the album. I didn't know that. I had like seven records on there. I knew that. Wow. I'm going to tell you how I knew it. I'm going I'm, to tell you how I knew it. Another pass on, shout out to Latoya Lucky. I produced a song with Latoya and Mims called Love Roller Coaster. Yeah. Actually, you didn't. Well, you, I did. Did, you did, but you didn't. Why didn't? Because I did her vocals. <laughs> <laughs> on that song. <laughs> no, and this is how I find out who the interns are. Because, mm. listen, Latoya, I love you. She wasn't going in the studio with some new guy she had never heard of. Got it. And this is when we're doing regret. Okay. And yep. She uh, yeah, what yeah, what yeah, was yeah. Good to me. Uh, good to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. This is up. the same exact time. She's on Capitol at the time mm -hmm. and Mims as well. And I remember, was it was it, was the Anar Darius? Darius. I was Darius. Just Darius. Shout him out. Was the Anar right. And I remember he came in there and he like, Toya, we need you on this Mims record and blah, 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 blah. And I need you to go in with the producers who did it, their names the interns. And she's like, oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm literally a fly on the wall, like, cause we're doing, we're doing her album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she like, I do it if Jay, if Jay do my vocals. I'm like, what? Yeah, I get dragged to this. I get dragged to this. It's not my song. That's I don't know crazy. them niggas. I don't know why I feel like I remember that. Yeah, oh, yeah somehow that. you didn't have to do it. Yeah, I, I mean, ended up having yeah, to do yeah. it. You know, Tank is on tour, or something. Right, Tank, right. You know what I mean? Tank, Tank, it, we already did our work, and Tank's gone. What? And I ended up cutting the vocals. That's, that's crazy. crazy. So that's how that's I knew dope. who yeah. the interns were. I don't think yeah. I got credit for that neither. You want to give me some? Uh... That's Latoya. Latoya should have <laughs> gave you. She should have gave you that out of she her piece. She can't give me credit. She should have gave you some pub out of her <laughs> piece. <laughs> that's the story. She should have gave you a five. Hey, at least. man, listen, that is man. Toy. Some <laughs> things we, some things we do for the culture, man. <laughs> that's great. Th this is how I find out who these guys are, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was enough pipeline to um, do a, a publishing deal with Sony ATV, mm -hmm. and um, Vincent Herbert had signed an artist from Chicago by the name of Feeb. Him and uh, Barry Hankerson. Mm -hmm. And um, it's crazy when I say Barry Hankerson to you because it's like he was in the trenches too. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. So, uh, shout out to Barry Hankerson. Shout, shout out to Barry Hankerson. 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 Hey, he gave a part of some amazing, hey, man. Amazing, amazing, amazing talents. Moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I got some, man. Barry Hankerson, he's the first person I remember being in his office two days after graduation. And. He said, so I heard the track stars want to sign you. But I don't understand, why would you want to sign to some niggas that signed to me? Why wouldn't you just want to come home? Why wouldn't you just come home? I said, all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How old are you at this time? You're 22. 23. You know what I'm saying? Like, wait, what? And no, no, this after me. So maybe I'm like 25 now. <clears throat> and uh, I remember him playing, playing him some beats. And, and some songs, and he was listening, and he was like, you real talented, man. It's just your beat's a little light in the ass. And when I tell you, my, one of my ribs cracked when he said that. You know, I don't like when people say <laughs> You don't like nothing. You, you don't know? like none of that. I don't <laughs> like that. He said, your beat's a little light in the ass, but don't worry. Don't worry. I'll get you with Tim. I'll get you with Tim, man, and get that together. But that was the beginning of me formulating the disrespectful 808. Because you're not going to tell me my beats is light in the ass, man. That shit used to haunt me at We're night. heavy from now on. Huh? Heavy from now on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 You took everything personally. I what? love it. I love it. He said, <laughs> I love it's it. a little light in the ass. Fuck. He told me I wasn't a producer. See, so you're, 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 you're a good songwriter. You're an amazing vocalist. You're an amazing singer. 
You're a good songwriter, but you're, you're not a producer. So we're going to get this Maybe I Deserve produced the right way. I just watched you at Love Records in full tank, tanky production mode. Yeah. I don't know if you realized how much you was in your bag last week. I wasn't even. Bro, that was a joke. Until you said it, and then Stacy called me. Stacy Barth called me and was like, I don't even, like, he said the same thing you said. You were just. Quarterback. Is is chaos. It was you, absolute chaos. You saw that there was a leader that needed to be, somebody needed to lead. Period. And how you led that set. You got Lucky Day. You know what I'm saying? Camper. Camper. Tim Kelly. It was it was a zoo in the room. It was a zoo. It was a zoo in the room. And, and I was like, nah, nah, I got to. And the orchestration. And then because people have so much respect for you, the way everybody just kind of fell in line, bro. I just thought it was some real general shit, though. And I grew as a producer. When you hit day. me the next day, I was like. Huh? I, I didn't agree. I didn't because I didn't. You in it? You minding your business it. and your natural habitat, living life. But it's like Barry Hankerson telling me I'm not a producer. That's crazy. I took that personally. <laughs> yeah. Started and I, producing. And the I shit. went on a beat camp. <laughs> yeah, hey, bro. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. And the song he told me that wasn't good for production. Became that production person, stayed. Yeah. yeah. And it ended up being the the song that. Was the, the, the foundation here. of my career. Yeah. So him. shout out, sh him. listen, shout out to Barry Hankinson for applying the pressure. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. applying the pressure. Absolutely, because if you don't have somebody, because all he's doing is telling his truth, right? If you don't have somebody that, you know, the one of my favorite proverbs: "Iron sharpens iron." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. if you don't got somebody, and that's why I feel like Jay is a cheat code. You know what I'm saying for you because. <laughs> Jay gonna talk that shit mm -hmm. and goddamn try to tear you down. Then he go without. I'm not with love. trying to without tear love, you down, man. But the words would be like, the, I, gotta the, get, I gotta get my shit together. You gotta have tough skin. You have leather. You gotta be. You gotta crocodile. You gotta have tough <laughs> alligator skin. That's a lot. To, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have Detroit gator skin. <laughs> <laughs> to deal I, with Jay Fallon. I love it though. I love it. It's bro. perfect. But but I'm um, I'm a product. You're a product. You're a product of tough teachings. Yep. Yeah. Everything was tough love for me. Yep. Nothing was nothing was cuddling and coddling and no. and and oh this is because I love you. None none of that. Nah. Straight up. None of it. That, that's why I say with a fam. I remember the day they was trying to figure out why do I play how I play. They was like, all right, wait, hold on. Who do you study? I was like, Kenny G, duh. And they laughed. You know what I'm saying? They're like, so you don't know about Charlie Parker? You don't know about John Coltrane? You don't know about Cannonball Adderley? Like, they was trying to push me to the stank jazz. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. It's another. Wait wait, 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 you told the fam, you people that. I told them, Kenny G. <laughs> And they laughed in my all, all I'm my laughing, peers. nigga. And I'm, I've <laughs> never been to FAMU, man. I will never make it. But listen, I might get an honorary, though. <laughs> if we can get you that. I can work I, on that I for work you. On that for you two yeah. honorary yeah, ass niggas, man. I work on I that, work that for you. Give me an honorary sure. something, man. I, I know a guy. Shit. I know get a guy. Get my dog. Get my dog right. <laughs> I done done some cool shit in my Bro. life. <laughs> I need an honorary. Bro, they fried me for that. And it, it, it pushed me to study, man, and just be a real student. That's where the interns comes from that name and that's why my school bell is the school bell is my tag like yeah. when people have their names on my hits it's a school bell you know what I'm so, saying so take me after Mims Barry Hankerson is saying why don't you sign to us like what you gonna sign them for what's the next step after that next step is so cause the interns are already formed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the interns formed in college okay right so now uh, I'm alone you know what I'm saying I have a three bedroom home two bathroom couple cars my mom really set me up while she was here and even after she was here my mom set me up bro wow. and I paid off the house I paid for my tuition and I put a studio in my basement and I changed my major to music business with mm -hmm. a concentration in production and in this arts of entrepreneurship class I incorporated this company to interns because I met an a &R through a guy by the name of Kevin Shine a uh, and r in the city name too. Two, mm. two Clark. And shout my brother, man, because he was the one 
that was like, nah, we don't, we're not gonna sign to Barry Hankerson. Nah, that's not the, that's not the play. The play is let's build it from scratch on our own out the mud. I've always had an idea for the interns, and I just thought that name was perfect, especially being in college. Like, hell yeah, yeah. And so the, I did a business plan on that company in college, where we said we were going to produce, manage, and market. And so two was the manager. I was the producer, and then we shared the marketing. We used to throw parties and shit like that in Chicago. We shared that together. Mm-hmm. And um, after Mims, after we moved to L.A. I one of y'all L.A. parties. I left early. I got about it there. It's a good time. Chicago niggas wild, bro. Hey, bro. Chicago niggas wild, bro. It's a good time. First day, they do that <laughs> rain dance. They do the rain dance. Chill. I think it's called like... Footworking. Yes. Yeah, footwork. Why is yeah. he calling footworking a rain dance? Jay is a monster. Because it's... No, you know what? It has a rain dance. See? Do, do, See? Do, 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 do. And you got to... And if you really footworking, the natives, somebody bro. has to do this to you. This is when you go <laughs> hyper mode. When you dancing and you footworking, do, do, do. Bang, 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 ski, ski. And you feel somebody do this. Then you go fast. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, get me. Get me. You got me. Oh. Get me. <laughs> you feel that happen? Somebody grab your shirt. To the party. Do, do. Yeah, oh, man. So, so y'all throwing parties, y'all producing. parties. And y'all managing some people, too. Yeah, two started managing Feed. That, that okay. was the artist I was signed to bear. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay. You know what I mean? And um, we uh, we were doing sessions out here. Like, as soon as we get to Sony, they just start putting us on the blind date. Uh, but y'all living in Chicago still? No, we moved in uh, 09. Yeah. So after MIMS happened, that's it. We that got up out of there. Yeah. yeah. Moved to Woodland Hills. Yeah. Um, I moved family in my mama house so that I could just come home and kind of, you know, Go back and forth. And um, I remember one of our first sessions. Not our first session was with the Jackie Boys. Shout and, out to the Jackie um, Boys, too. Shout out yeah, to and the Jackie Boys. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. And um, they was like, uh, it was a, at a session with us, and they had to leave early because they had to go work with Sean Kingston, and they was burnt out. They're like, yo, we on the Sean Kingston album. I have no more ideas. Coast, please come with us to this session. And... I was like, why y'all want me? You know what I'm saying? You got Benny Blanco as the producer. You know what I'm saying? I'm a producer. And they're like, no, you're a writer, Coach. And even if you don't feel like writing, at least just come and talk yeah. shit so we can at least have fun. Yeah. We just yeah. want to have fun. Yeah. So I go there. They pull up the song. And it's like, it's almost like a look. you know, Sean Kingston kind of had like a little Caribbean twang to yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. So I'm just making making jokes like she's indecisive look in my eyes girl come a bit closer i'm like just like doing wild shit just cracking jokes that the jokes turned into sean kingston featuring justin bieber eeny meeny <laughs> shawty is a eeny meeny miny mo lover shawty is a eeny me yo wait nigga you that's my it? that's my first I co-wrote it with the jackie boys no, that's no shit way. it's my first multi-platinum Plaque. Yeah. Wow. By 2010. By, by accident. accident. Just accident. by the homie saying, come and crack jokes. Come crack jokes with us. Nigga, the song is called Any Meeny. So, I mean, I, I get it. I get it. It's fun. It's definitely you. <laughs> I said, yeah. she's indecisive. <laughs> <laughs> this you know what I'm saying? This yeah. Yo. So, I remember thinking that I was supposed to be cool now, like on a whole nother level. Because I got Mims. I got Justin Bieber. I got a gold plaque. I got a platinum plaque. I should be the nigga out here. I wasn't. I know. I've gotten you into the club. I was struggling to get in the club. I'm, st- I'm still struggling. Coach, Coach, hurry up. Str- Coach, we're about to walk in. Struggling. Okay? okay? Coach fixing his jacket and shirt and shit. Still trying to get across the street. Coach, hurry up. You're not going to get in, Coach. Because you're not going to get in, Coach. If you're trying we, to get in. Once we in, once it's we over. In. It's done. You're, you're finished. You're done. <laughs> So, like, it was like trying to get over the hump of why don't y'all let me in the club off my face car? Why is it not? Why is this not enough? Because it's a hundred niggas with them placements, man. <laughs> it's just the truth. Yeah. So, at the time, my manager was Troy Carter and he had Lady Gaga signed. So, I'm like, all right, that's it, man. I'm finna get on this Gaga album. It's a layup. And I started making unst, 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 unst beats, right? I, all right, I do. I, I call them glow stick music. There you go, glow stick music. I started. Yeah. Mm-ts, mm-ts. 
I started trying to, cause it's like on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get in there. Yeah, Tank says four on the floor, cause he, you know, he's a musician. Yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? Glow stick. It's glow <laughs> stick where I'm from. Like, when you hear that, you think niggas is coming out of nowhere with glow sticks. All right, it's time for me to leave. <laughs> 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 you they tried to leave me on my birthday. <laughs> Vegas, <laughs> Vegas after hour music. I took him. I took him. It was a bunch of us. We went. It was. We left Diddy's house and went to this club. And it was four on the floor. And it was jumping because it's mm. New Year's. It was mm-hmm. just, you know, New Year's pad. And and they sitting there. I'm having the time of my life. First of all, I'm a little high too. Right? <laughs> and these niggas are sitting there looking like this. And I'm like, "What's going on? Why you so sad? Why you so sad, Jay? <laughs> Jay, why aren't you partying? Well, I wasn't sad. I was <laughs> mad. Jay, right. Go with me, Jay. Come on. Jay, why aren't you partying, Jay? It's good. Hey. And I was sitting just like this. He was sitting <laughs> just like this. <laughs> I just love. I just this love. nigga out of his mind. I just love. <laughs> so I never got on the Lady Gaga album. I never even got in the studio with Lady Gaga. You know what I'm saying? I never even got in the studio with Lady Did Gaga. Did you meet her? I met her. Took some pictures. All the little cool shit that don't do they nothing don't to your bank nothing. account. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Speak on it. And so Katie Welly at Sony shout ATV. Shout out to Katie mm. Welly. Katie she Welly. Been shout out a couple times on this podcast. Because Katie Welly is the reason why. Can't let it show. Katie has something to do with Can't Let It Show? Because of the sample. Sample. Helping us get to Kate Bush. Katie Welly, <laughs> Big John. Yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went on, yeah. We went on a mad dash. Yeah. Katie Welly was instrumental. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Katie Welly had one of the most uncomfortable conversations of her life. Because I saw her struggling, trying to tell me what she wanted to tell me. Mm. She was like, cosine. It's when we signed you guys, we were hoping that we would get some of that like Chicago ghetto bounce, like the boom, like the eight. Like, I was like, You want some, you want the shit, shit, huh? You want the boom, Katie. And you, want some, like, you want some nigga shit. You want she some nigga shit. That, she couldn't say that, though. She couldn't say it. Yeah. It's Can tough you? when you got to make white people talk like that. This yeah. is it's not. It's but she was, she was trying That's, to. It's your, your fault. fault. It's your fault <laughs> for not giving her what she signed you for. <laughs> I wasn't. I was not. I was not. She had our logo in her office. Wow. Oh yeah, she was rocking. She and I was her. just. She mentioned us in her thirty for thirty under Billboard. That touched me. I was like, Yo, we just met you. You ain't had to drop our name in yeah, Billboard she like that. I was dope. That was a big look for us for her to for her to uh, drop our drop our names in her article. And so she was like, just trying to express like, I want the old you back. I don't want the Lady Gaga chaser. Hmm. And mm. after wow. it's very. Bro, wow. clutch. that is clutch. very clutch wow. in this clutch, shit, bro. Clutch. That's clutch. When you clutch. can tell a motherfucker, like, stop chasing that lotto oh, ticket right there. Yes. Because a lot of times in this business, we choose our business partnerships by who people work with or for, mm-hmm. thinking they're going to get us in those rooms or put us in. And it's like, that's not your path. That's not even what you do. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Why are you chasing? Like, man, I've watched so many, um, you know, being politically correct as I am never, um, right, right. urban artists, right, right, right. urbanist nigga, go right. get <laughs> white management. There you go. The fuck are you doing? Hmm. Fuck are you doing? Hmm. Get with the people who understand what you do, and know, be great. Know where to take. And be great. Relax. Relax. You're not getting on those projects, and you're not getting in those rooms. And if you get in that room, in that room, it's going to be what you call it earlier, the photo op and other shit. That's not going to touch, your bank, touch your bank account. That does not touch your bank account. Mm. Straight up. Mm. So, man, big shout to to Katie for this conversation of like, get I back love to her you. For that. Get back That's to amazing. you. That's amazing. Yeah. After she says get back to you, one of my partners from Chicago, Dilla man. You know what I'm saying? He worked with Dirk, mm-hmm. OTF. You know what I'm saying? He was. He was a uh, role managing Big Sean, and he introduced me to him. And I remember playing him some beats. And this is before I started smoking weed because I used to be allergic. That's a whole nother story. You hold on, hold on, hold on. So, I want to touch that before you get stay to in Big it. Sean. I'm stay how, in how, it. how you were allergic to weed? So I used to were be a, past tense. Yeah, I'm trying to figure this out. I used to be allergic to weed. In in what way? Like what was your reaction? I mean, like, like hitch. Like as soon as I tap it. My whole face would swell up. Oh, in real life? In real life. Oh, and shit. And so that was, I remember in high school, I gave it a try. And my mama being like, 
because I wasn't allergic to anything. You know what I'm saying? And my mama being like, Marco. And I was like, Ma, I went to Long John Silver's. It's the, <laughs> it's the fish at Long John Silver's. You know what I'm saying? She like, Marco, you have to stay away from that. I don't, I've never taken you there. Why are you? <laughs> you know I've never taken you there. <laughs> taking you there? Whole time, it's the weed. And it wasn't until I broke up with my first baby mama that I was on some real depressed shit. And I also was working with James Von Leroy a lot. So uh, between he, the depression, he gonna, he gonna smoke. between the depression and the curiosity, yeah, follower, and he gonna make it look fun too. I just stayed in the house and built up a tolerance. Like my face would be swole, and I just fought through it. I fought through hey, it bro. until my body, you, it's going to kill me. <laughs> until my body was like, all right, we got it, we got it. It's like the kid who eats dirt. You really what that is? You, like your my body becomes eye was immune swole. to it. Hey, man. It was a lot of shit happening to my body. You are Wow. And I just was like, we can get through this. I got to <laughs> This nigga conditioned himself to smoke weed. Fall we can it. get through this. No. Fall through you it. like the Chronicles of Riddick. No, bro. You are wild. Yeah, yeah. That's, Fall through that's it. insane. Um, so you meet Big Sean. So I meet Big Sean. He hit in the weed and he stopped and said, am I high or are these beats really good? I took offense to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I, didn't, I didn't even know what the fuck that even means. Like, what do you mean? Are you high? And I remember leaving. I was I was with my homie Aaron Michael Cox, R.I.P. My my younger brother, and um, I Dilla was like, "Yo, look, man, like, you know, calm down. I'm gonna have him come by your studio." Came by the studio, and I was working on a track. The first track that I was working on was a little light, a little light in the ass, like what Barry was saying. And then um, he kind of stopped the session and was like, "All right, well, hold on. If I got a beat in my head, though." I got an idea in my mind. Can you make something to something I have? I'm like, yeah, go for it. Like, what you got? That man said, ass, 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 stop. Now make that motherfucker hammer time. And in the moment, <laughs> I was like, yo, that is, I started clapping. I remember myself clapping like, so poetic. You know what I'm saying? I went to the keyboard like, Ooh, hey. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, we there with you. We with you. <laughs> then I thought about him saying, make that motherfucker hammer, hammer time. time. I said, oh. Well, let me get that goddamn that MC hammer. hammer. Let me download. Yeah, 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 yeah. Grab Shout this out one. to the Bay Area. Shout out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember in Hammer Time when he said, "Now break it down now." Do no no. I remember that yeah. it was a time where the record went somewhere else because he said, "Now break it down now." Yeah, yeah. So when he said, "Make that motherfucker Hammer right. Time," very James Brown esque. Yeah. I had to go to that piece of the sample when he said, "Break it down now," and it's no 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 no. Yeah. Drop that bitch right there. My 808 that said, Mr. Barry Hankerson, you don't know me. <laughs> Katie, <laughs> Katie, this for you, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And now, man, we now we now we double platinum. Oh my God. Now we in the club and you we finally in feeling what we want to yeah. feel. You yeah. in the club, nigga. I feel, now like, we I in feel the... like I made it with you. I, I said, when you had that, I was like, oh, was, my young nigga did that. Oh. And motherfucker would come on, nigga, Greystone, ass, ass. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going yeah. crazy. Ooh. Yeah. That was that that gave me the yeah. feeling I was yeah. I was man, I was looking for that feeling. And then Nikki jumped on the remix and said in the islands of Waikiki. <laughs> I was like, oh, we go again. We go again more. We're going up again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this was like the beginning of the fucking the 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 run, bro. This was the beginning of like those guys got it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So give us a rundown of of that, and then what that what that turns into. What are, what are the, what are the records that come after that? Like how does how this plays out when you get those phone calls now that are like I need that because that is a that's a very real thing in this industry. Mm -hmm. They they don't want variety. They want that. They want what's proven. Mm -hmm. And you and two found a space this proven space for the interns where y'all niggas 
cooked and made a lot of money Bro. and had a lot of success. So after ass, give us. Yeah, I mean, that, that was it. It was just like, one, it was like all of the political, the fight that we was trying to get just literally scooted to the side. Like mm -hmm. it, it turned into, I didn't even care who I was working with every day. I knew somebody popping was going to be at the studio and I knew he was going to deliver. Yeah. I looked at my ass cap uh, the other day and it's 317 joints in there. Three seven. My goal is six hundred, so I'm halfway home. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of the beef was in this era. So after that, I remember having a meeting with uh, Karen Kwok, dropping off some beats to Karen Kwok. Mm -hmm. She gave those beats to uh, a good friend of hers by the name of the Dream. The Dream was on tour with Rihanna, and going through beats, wrote her a song. The last song on her album, he wrote a song called Kate, 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 Kate. And Smash. he wrote that shit out of that song. I remember when I made that beat, because I, I originally made that beat for Christina Aguilera, and Eric Bellinger wrote the song. It was a mm -hmm. song called Merry Go Round. And in typical like industry fashion, you do a record that you love and they don't pay for it, it never comes out. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, you know what, man, I'm about to start moving these beats around you don't pay me for the beat i'm giving it to somebody else yeah that somebody else was rihanna and that's a good somebody <laughs> bro my god i remember when we first got the news that the song was going on the album they told us it was an interlude and me and two almost got into a fist fight because i was so mad that we finally won the Rihanna sweepstakes and they were talking about we weren't going to get publishing because it was just an interlude and, you know, we will pay your fee, but... And I'm just like, come on, man. Like, this is... this is, One of these is it. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. This one. And I remember, too, being like, bro, you got to relax, man. This is the best song on the album, dog. This shit going to go... Like, chill. Like, he knew. Chill. Yeah, he knew. knew the whole he knew. time. He was like, chill. And I'm like, no, fuck that, man. Fuck, I'm sick of this. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there in full. And so you was you was like Lil Trey when, when Doughboy got <laughs> Why shot. Why you be in my head like that? Why are you? <laughs> I'm just getting ready was, to say. He was punching say, the air. Say the joke before <laughs> me. I'm trying to get to the <laughs> what? joke. <laughs> what are you talking about? Swinging, trying to knock the air out. <laughs> shit, this is shit. Because I was, I was, I was we both down. know Coast so well. Like, listen, guys, Coast is Coast is the nicest guy ever. He doesn't want to fight. He doesn't want to do those things. Right. So to get him to that point, man, to really make him mad, has to be an injustice. And I then only he, get mad if it's and an then injustice. he's still going to just punch the air. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. That's it. So I'm swinging, trying to knock the air out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To like trying to calm me down. And then, like, a few weeks later, I'm in Greystone, and I hear the DJ say, like, we got Rihanna in the building, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yo, I'm on this lady album. She got me as an interlude. I ain't never even met this lady. Mm -hmm. And I saw Chris Anacute. Mm -hmm. I'm just like. Anacute. I'm yeah. like, Chris, man, I just heard the DJ say Rihanna was here. I produced Birthday Cake, and I never even met her. Yeah. He's like, oh, you ain't never met Rihanna? Oh, come on, man. Walks me over there to the section, bro. See Riri. He says, Rihanna, this is co-sign from the interns. They did they did birthday cake for you. She said, Oh my God, you did, you did. I love that song. Dive into my arms. I seen the pictures flashing. I envisioned myself on media takeout as her new boyfriend. <laughs> I knew they was gonna write. <laughs> Who is the mystery man with Rihanna? <laughs> So I'm I'm actually holding on to the hug a little longer oh, yeah. so that I can have this moment of I'm her new nigga. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, and we happy. Yeah, and, we, sure. and we happy. <laughs> and we happy. <laughs> and we happy. It's, it's funny because the, the media takeout article that I ended up getting was with Angela Simmons and they name they put somebody else's name on top of my they didn't even put my name. It was like a basketball player. It was like Angela and such and such. And it's like Guys, you're supposed to do this for Rihanna, man, and actually use my name. But anyway, she said, I have an idea, though. I have an idea. I think I'm going to put Chris Brown on the remix. So I want you to come by because my fans are asking for the... 
the Rihanna Navy wants the whole song. I'm just like, oh my God, you about to put Chris Brown on this? Mm-hmm. Y'all back? To, y'all finna get back together for this? So I'm not your boyfriend. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm not your boyfriend, but I'm gonna call the people for me to take out and make sure <laughs> they don't write this up. <laughs> Because I know, because shit can get wild. <laughs> and yeah, she called Chris, and that remix came out and went to number one. And when I tell you, I had never got a performance check. Mm, different. It's different. Mm-hmm. The performance when it's on radio. Yeah, when the song performs. When the song performs. Yeah, yeah every song does when, not perform. Every song don't dance for you. Yeah. Every song don't dance for you. Bruh. Now, watch this though. It's crazy because to this day, that version of the song is not available in iTunes or Spotify Mm -hmm. and it's never been sold. Mm -hmm. So I've had this conversation with Dream a few times. Like, bro, like, how much money didn't we get because we never sold and and people can't stream it? He was like, it ain't nothing crazy. It goes to like four or six million. Nothing nothing crazy, though. That's what he said to you? Because he's too rich. Yeah. There's that. He's too rich. Ah, There's that. He's too yeah. rich to understand. Nothing crazy. Uh, just four to six million. No, he understands. He's too rich to understand where I'm No, 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 no. He understands. He understands. It's a flaw. He flossed you. Yeah. I like, said, I mean, listen, I respect it. I said, sir. He just slapped you upside your head. It's nothing crazy, though. Four to six million. Like, you acting like. You acting like. But there, yeah, there was, a, there, was a, there was a different thing that, that went along with that record. So I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. But I will say that. That record couldn't come out. I will say that. If at any point, for the streets, because this year is the ten year anniversary of Talk That Talk of that album. It's wow. the ten year anniversary this year, twenty twenty two. She ever puts that version up and stream it? I'm tell my wife to pack her shit. We moving. We're moving that day. It's mm-hmm. out of here. It's time to upgrade. So mm-hmm. like she has Fenty now though. I mean she's a big. It's fan. a long shot, yeah. but like Jay Brown, Jay. If at any any point you want to put that song up in streamings, streamings. On the streaming, he was full <laughs> on the streaming Streamings. for the fans to listen to Chris Brown and Rihanna. Uh, my family would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The Palacioses would love that. Wow. So yes, yeah, so that's 2012. Okay. 2013 is an, I can't I can't believe I really did get offended. All my songs come from offense. So Anthony Soleil comes to the studio. He was partners with Troy Carter and managing Nas. Still manages Nas to this day. And he said, he came by to just kind of figure out, all right, well, you know, what's next for the interns? Like, what y'all, what y'all working on? And I'm like, bro, like, you our manager, bro. Like, throw something off the glass. You know what I'm saying? What you got? And he was like, it's crazy because I was just about to call Hit Boy and send him these Nas vocals, man. I'm just like looking at two, like, who bands is this, bro? <laughs> who bands is this? Because he in our studio. <laughs> He's about a, to send somebody else. He's our co-manager. He boy just he fresh off niggas in Paris. Signed he's, to Kanye. He's, he's fine. She's uh, fine. My Chicago hero, bruh. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, you know what? My bad, man. I'm gonna send you. The, I'm gonna send you the files, Coast. I got. But it's it's not that much though. It's just a vocal from Nas, a bass line from Salam Remy, and a sample that Heavy D. Gave us the late heavy D, RIP, and salute mm-hmm. to the legend. Absolutely. So he gave me that Pro Tools session with those three uh, sounds in there. And I remember talking to Fab about it. Like, man, you know what he said he was going to do? And she said, Coach, but it's Nas, though, right? And you know your beats are kind of shiny. Mm-hmm. My you've been, shiny you've been offended twice. And this is the third time. And just in that, on one song. In one song. Yeah, one, <laughs> on yeah, one song, yeah, yeah. he was offended. Yeah. 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 I said, hmm. 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 I went through my hard drive to find the filthiest, <laughs> dirtiest <laughs> fucking. Nigga pulled up the shit. Nigga, what? <laughs> Give me the dirtiest <laughs> snare. What is the dirtiest <laughs> snare that I own? Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. I'm going through the hard drive. And. That's how Nas the Don comes about. New York girls in the Mazus are with Nas the Don, Nas the Don. Man, if she doesn't give me that, your beats is shiny pep talk. And I remember sending the beat to Anthony Soleil and recording him the first time he heard it. And he was just like, shit. You know what I mean? Then I remember being in the studio with Nas, right? Like, now we building, doing other records. And I remember this man, 
I remember him being the coolest man I had ever met, yo. Because I'm funny, bro, and I'm cracking jokes and people are laughing. But Nas would be like, <laughs> hilarious. And that was him. <laughs> that was it. That was him <laughs> laughing. That's how he laughed at me. He laughed cool. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> he got the little, little, little scratchy, little hilarious. I'm just like, <laughs> get back to the beat. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to the beat. <laughs> and then uh, 2014, um, Astrid was on our management team, Astrid, and she called and said, Nikki, want to wanna work with y'all? And we got up with Nikki, and Nikki was like, I need a song that makes my dancers feel like how they felt when Ass came out. Because I remember being on tour, and I remember just watching them Going crazy. I need song. I need one of those. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I need my own ass. Hmm. I'm like, I got you, Nikki. And so she had a verse and this sample idea, um, the boom, 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 from Polo, Polo the Don. And so she was like, I have this idea that I like and I like it a lot, but I know you can make me love it. Hmm. I was like, all right. So we got in the room. First thing we did was listen to the whole Sir Mix a Lot sample. Just listen to the whole song. Just vibe to the song for a yeah. second. When he got to that part where he was like, "My anaconda don't want none," it. he was like, "That's how you need to start the shit. If you gonna do, if I'm you and I'm making the beat, I'm starting it with that." I said, "Nigga, you say less to me." Yeah. You say yeah. less to me. Shut your mouth when you're talking to me. Oh, you shut your yeah. mouth while you talk to yeah. me. Yeah. My yeah. anaconda, boom. My anaconda, boom. And that's what I was saying as far as fam, you, boom, 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 like the arrangement of the, that, that, it was like an opportunity for me to do this track and then pay homage and then put the school bell. Usually I just put the school bell at the beginning. I'm putting the school bell every time that break happens. I'm yeah. a over a school bell, this motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. So people know, you know what I'm saying, that this is me, you yeah. know what I mean? Because even on the Nas the Don song, I feel like Jason Joshua turned my bell down in the mix and it was like in a... The second verse area, it's like you turning my bell now. So uh, shout out to Jason Joshua because that's man, that's who makes the ass and the gang of my records, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. Jason Joshua got it. But he turned your bell down. He turned my bell down on that nod, so I don't know why he did that. Turning it, probably, it was too shiny. It was, it was too shiny. Bell it was too, no, no, it was too shiny for Look, the for the for Nas. Probably too shiny for Nas. But yeah, it happens. Stop turning people. Jason bells knows. Down. He knows. He, he he took the lead on it. Yeah. Oh no, he'll take the lead. He took the lead. Yeah, he got. Yeah. He took the lead on one of our songs. Remember, keep it one hundred. And we walked in the studio, and he starts playing Keep It 100. And I'm like, as soon as it starts, I'm like, what the f <laughs> I, I make this face, right? And he says, ah, wait for it. Wait on it. Nigga. He said, oh, he <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do it again. He built that suspense. Start it over. He built that suspense for you. Now, you know when Jason's right, he's going to make sure you know that he's right. He's yeah, gonna make sure yeah, yeah. you know a hundred times over. Yeah. You guys gotta fuck with me. You fuck with me and fuck with me only. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. yeah. That shit, I was like, you are amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah he's Jason uh, Jason will hit you with a little bit of light co-production on your mix. No, it's not light. It's not light. It's not light. No, Jason's definitely producing niggas' records. <laughs> right. Out no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, when we send a Can't Let It Show and can't let a show is done. I'm like, just do what you do. Get the mix. I got can't let a show back with a snare on the hook. I was like, did you put a snare on? <laughs> he said, absolutely. Ah, you needed it. I said, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Thanks, Thanks man. You. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yo, Jason called me before. He makes ass and was like, what you want the bass to sound like? I was like, I want it to sound like a distorted bass guitar. The rumble on that motherfucker that he put on that bitch, okay. bro. God. So, um, so yeah, we started Anaconda off with that. My Anaconda. So that's how he even got the name. It wasn't called Anaconda. Okay. It was called Anaconda after, you know what I'm saying, yeah. the intro happened. And um, I just remember that song like going to the moon like that was the most intentional hit yeah. that i had had where it was just like 
okay, Nikki, this I know that this I, I'm recognizing in the times that this is about to be a lot. Things are yeah. gonna be different after this. Mm-hmm. Bro, I had another proud moment for you. Man. Off of that. We're in Seattle, mm-hmm. Jamal Crawford's wedding, mm-hmm. Tank's performing. And who's there? Who else is gonna perform? Seattle's own. Sir Mix a lot. Wow. And I'm like, yo, wow. my guys. Right. My guys did that record. Man. He got a lot and more I had money. It, no, for, for sure. that. Yeah, he yeah, just yeah, got a whole. No, thing. y'all owed it to him. He, 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 he took a lot of that pub. Too. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, you start the song off with it. Do you know what I mean? He yeah, said, yeah, oh, thank yeah. you. Then you yeah, name yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, it was a really proud moment being able to just be like, man, them is, them is my guys that, that yeah, did that, right? Yeah. And he, he was like, man, that, I love it. Man, that was a moment. Then next year, we're nominated for the rap song of the year, bro. And, you know, to me, that's the coolest award, man. The rap song of the year, like shit, man. And I remember being so hype, and then like lying to myself, saying I don't care about if we win or lose. I'm already a winner. And then we lost. And I went to a deep depression to move back to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> we lost. I fucked up the bag and went back to my auntie's house. And I just see myself right now in the backyard oh, crying. Man. I'm in the backyard crying because I know. That as many times as people have been like, your mother must be so proud. In that moment, mm-hmm. she was not proud. You fucked up the bag? I fucked up the bag. I was out here wilding, having way too much fun, indulging in things that don't happen in my local neighborhood where I'm from. And the oh. Hollywood sauce had gotten to my bloodstream, bro. I needed a real timeout. You put yourself on timeout? Nah, I fought it. But when you ain't got the rent. No, I'm asking, no, I'm just asking yeah. for, no, I didn't. I wasn't for the viewers. I wasn't strong enough. Nah, yeah. I didn't. Who, how, how did timeout happen for you? Because I can tell you how timeout happened for me. Fa- family members flew in town. Wow. Two just paid to put my whole house in storage. And they was just like, come on, come on, buddy. Full intervention. Come on, let's go. And look, it was wild because what I didn't realize was people didn't understand what I was going through but I was having a moment of not really all the way dealing with moms Mm -hmm. in the midst of all of this I had an artist that I got a pub deal at Universal and was about to do his artist deal at Columbia they had just signed Adele and Columbia was like this is our male Adele and then he passed away a testicular cancer a brother by the name of Aaron Michael Cox he was 22 years old Extremely talented. Yeah. Extremely talented. And Extremely it just talented. it shook my world. You know what I'm saying? Like, it literally shook two blocks away from, like, the studio. I'm like, wait, what? And and then my son's mother and I, you know, we our breakup was, like, official. Our breakup was official. So I just was in, I was in shambles, bro. I was not doing the self-work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And... I remember going home and I remember my family just being so confused, like, and I remember my cousin, the older sister to my cousin Jazz, that's the one that seen me playing basketball butt naked, her older sister drove me to a rehab center and I was just like, so taken back, like, wait, this is what y'all think I need? Oh, if you don't get me out of here, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then I realized, like, that was how I realized that's the energy where you were. Damn, this is yeah. motherfuckers think I'm full on strung out out this bitch. Like, oh shit! And I remember being home and feeling so low, but the love that I was getting at the crib was so rejuvenating, but confusing at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I I can think of this one brother he used to be on the corner, man, my uh, next door neighbor. Uh, his name was Toriano. And I remember growing up where my mom, everybody just be like, you stay away from Toriano. You know, he gang banging and I don't want to see you on the corner with him. And now 2015 with all the decorations for the first time in my life, I'm in Maywood on the corner with Toriano. Hitting the weed. I'm telling him about goddamn Nicki Minaj. (laughs) (laughs) And Rihanna. And he telling me, Bro, when I was locked up and you was doing your thing, do you know they didn't believe that I knew you, man? 
And I'm telling him, that's little bro right there, man. I'm telling him, I'm like, man, y'all better get out of here, man. That's little bro. And it was just like, damn. They told me to stay away from you my whole life, and here I am with you. And this, the love that you, I didn't, I don't, I didn't know. I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? He had been locked up while the run was happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the rejuvenation of Chicago love, bro, got me together. That deep, because I turned Where back you into Marcos. Expected to come from too. Where you, I this mean, guy yeah. is, you know, in yeah. a sense, off limits. Yeah. Off limits for you your entire life. But the streets is watching, as they say. Absolutely, no, absolutely, they are. And I'm they sitting are. there, I'm grown now. You know, it can't nobody tell me I can't. And now, and I got the weed now. And there he goes, still there. So I'm, and my cousin was there. And my cousin used to be cool. So we, we on the corner, bro. I'm on the corner in 2015. It may, I'm on the corner. Bro. I know. <laughs> he said, I know. I'm on the corner. <laughs> I know. Man. And. Because me and this fool used to be on the phone. Well, I mean, you the reason why I came back. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was about, it was about a good nine month timeout. Mm -hmm. And I remember Jay hit me like, man, what's up? I'm checking in. And I remember trying to tell him that everything was amazing. I was trying to paint <laughs> Chicago to be the greatest thing that ever happened. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm downtown with a Soho membership. I'm at Columbia. And, uh, you know, they want me to do a TED Talk, man. You know, I'm a, uh, he was like, Cole, Cole, it's time to come back. What you, what you doing, bro? Come back to L.A., man. What are you doing? I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to come back. You know what I'm saying? Came back to L.A. It was a little LA, deeper bro. than that. It's a little deeper what I, than that. What I leave out? Because, <laughs> Look at me. I'm like, wait, wait. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Before because, I say that. Because, <laughs> because our, our podcast is very real, and our podcast is cautionary at times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the information that we give and how we give it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nigga, you my brother. I love you to death. I called you a loser. Shit. I left that part out, huh? <laughs> yeah, like, but I had to. Yeah. yeah. I had to because you had got into mm. big fish in a small pond mode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You went home with all your accolades mm -hmm. and you was flossing it to everybody on the corner and everybody at the Soho House of Chicago mm -hmm. about what you had done in LA and how you you were, in my, this is my opinion of me mm -hmm. looking at it. I'm like, oh, he didn't went back home and not told him why he at home. Mm -hmm. He didn't went back home to say, listen, the prodigal son is back and I'm cracking and blah. Mm. When I, I definitely didn't tell people why you was back. Right. Yeah. No, which yeah. I get it. Right. I get it. Yeah. But the people who know and the people who are there for those moments when two is getting your place packed up and your family is trying to have an intervention. And like I was literally a part of all of that for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you giving me the the gloss over story about what is what's happening out there and and I'm like Nah, mm -hmm. nigga, you a, you're a loser. <laughs> you quit. Quit. You quit. Because mm -hmm. there's a mm -hmm. thing. Like, I respect the guys who do it where they're from. I respect y'all. If, if, if you can accomplish the great things that you can accomplish in major cities like New York and Los Angeles when it comes to music business. Mm -hmm. In Atlanta now, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, if you can accomplish those things in smaller cities and in, in, in places that the music isn't um, put on a on a major scale every single day. Even though mm -hmm. Chicago has amazing talent, has amazing people that have come out of Chicago and are still in Chicago. Mm -hmm. But for someone who had went or came to Los Angeles and made it for themselves to go back home and not on some I'm just going back home and I'm and I'm cracking mm -hmm. on some I'm going back home because I got to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, bro, you can't, you can't let them push you out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, mm -hmm. if you're going to go back on your own mm -hmm. and you're going to open up a school of music mm -hmm. and you got a label going mm -hmm. and you got you signed an artist, salute to you. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're going home. Right, because they took your basketball. With your pockets, you, you, you with your bunny ball. ears. Yeah. Whew. You've lost. Whew. And I hated having to have that conversation with you. But I knew I couldn't get off the phone with you that way. Mm -hmm. I knew I couldn't get off the phone with you that way. And I had to, at, at the very least, at least tell you how I felt. Mm -hmm. He had to offend you. Mm -hmm. I had, had to. to offend you. Had to. Yes. Right. Yes. And I will say this. 
if we didn't have the rapport that we had, mm -hmm. like there, I'm thinking about this one time we were just talking and he was like, hey, hey nigga, I fuck with you, bro. And if you need anything, dog, I got you. Like when you said that shit, I was like, there ain't nobody really just kept it a being like that. Like where I could really feel like I had a big bro out here. Like you really just in very simple terms, like, bro, you're in. Had we not had that dynamic, I don't know if I would have listened Received to you. Received it. Yeah, 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 I don't know yeah, if no, I would have no, heard no. you. I would have been, been a bitch-ass nigga yeah, too. Yeah, I was very like this rebellious. Nigga, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. I was very rebellious, but I appreciate that, man, because I came home uh, to my second home of L.A. I came back to my second home of L.A. and really made it home, um, you know, locked in with my wife. And it's crazy because my wife is the first woman that I met in LA in mm -hmm. 2005. Mm -hmm. Speak on it. Speak on it. You know it. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now, here comes this low moment. I'm coming back to the city. And of course, everybody's gone. Everybody who was just calling me 10 times a day, asking for files, asking me to... My phone doesn't ring anymore. It's just dry. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know... Mm -hmm. But my wife was still treating me like I was the nigga. And bro, I didn't take, I didn't even know her at the time. And he's telling me about her, and I'm like, bro, you ain't gonna find, bro, you ain't gonna find that again. Stay in there. How you treating You're me not like I find got that it again. When, at, when I feel like I'm at my lowest? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can I can think of a Mother's Day where we was kicking it, and I just felt the breakdown building, and I'm like, ooh, I'm finna cry. Mm -hmm. Let me run out the house so that my lady don't see this weak moment. And I was in the garage about to close the door. And she opened the door like, babe, where you going? You okay? And it was just like. I loved you. It was that cry I'm trying to brew. I was trying to get out before yeah. it came. It's Mother's Day. I want to cry about my mama. Yeah. yeah. I want to cry about everything. Yeah. And I told her I was like, "This is the part of my life where I'm supposed to fall off, and everybody's supposed to say what happened to him. He was so talented, and you're not letting me fall off. Mm. You're not letting it. Shit. You're not letting the whole thing go through. Yeah. And she." The way she took that so lightly, she was like, oh, no, of course not. I got you. I love you. Like, what? Matt, very like, what are you that's, talking about? And then, and then let me leave. Oh, all right, all right, go, ahead. Go, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Come on back in. And I was just like, oh, she's the one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's the one. I'm tripping. She always been the one. Yeah. I'm, I'm the problem. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like a lot of the growth moments of my life were the moments when I was be I was able to be honest with myself and say I'm the problem. Yeah, it's but, me. But that's the thing, though. Yes, you you were the problem because uh, uh, yes, the dragon was definitely the problem. I love the dragon, but <laughs> and that's a problem thank you, thank too. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Listen, thank you, thank you. No, no, no. But, <laughs> and I and I and I and I respect and love the accountability in that. Mm -hmm. But there's something with men where the right or the wrong woman mm. can make or break you. For sure. Oh, a thousand percent. And as my little brother, mm -hmm. the, like I said, I hadn't even met her yet. But from the conversations that we were having pertaining to her, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, she's going to make him. Mm -hmm. Like you have been successful. You have been successful. And I knew you would get it back. Mm -hmm. But it's about maintaining that. It's about... It's about making that a lifestyle. Yep. It's about somebody creating a home for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why even when I came by the studio and you, and, you, and you asked me to be part of the wedding and the, you know to be one of the groomsmen, I was like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. absolutely, bro, mm -hmm. because I had seen the full transition. I had seen everything that this woman had brought into your life. Like I remember even when y'all was doing Man Cave and just like it was almost like she was on Man Cave at your at your at your party that you had, like mm -hmm. the watch party. Mm -hmm. She was so excited, bro. Man. She geez. was so excited. Man. And I'm like, oh this girl love him. 
Yeah. For real, for real. For real, yeah. for real. I, like, this nigga piece of shit. Man. <laughs> And you know, and it's crazy. Cause you still was getting through it. Yo, it, it's crazy. I'm very honest about my friends. No, nah, real talk. Cause look, it's unconditional, right? Unconditional. So like, it made me think about my mom again. Like, yeah, that's the only somebody lady. loving you that way. Mm-hmm. For better for worse, that's mine. I'm gonna stick behind. I'm gonna stick beside him. That's mine. That's yeah. my boy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and someone that could understand where I was coming from. So that was just like a that was a game changer for me, man. Because also coming from a great family, I was imbalanced. There was never a time for me to be off out here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I had a house behind my studio. So we would go do sessions. And then I would take the session in my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You and know what I'm the, saying? And then the rain dancing would yeah. start. Is what a time. Uh but then yeah, wife wifey and the family life gives the balance i can drive into town do what i gotta do get out of there i look at them beautiful kids man and lauren hill d'angelo nothing even matters Mm. like i no longer have to try and be pressed because i got it i'm uh, i'm already i'm up yeah i have a beautiful family yo you know what i'm saying and i'm you know i think about that scripture that says what profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul. The whole world. Not the whole world. And you I'm everything. And I feel like I see some of my homies that they have the world, but they don't have they don't have their soul. How they soul, bro. Yeah. 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 And so you know You gotta decide the costs. Yeah. I'm, I wouldn't trade my life. I wouldn't trade yeah, it. Yeah, I'm yeah. not I don't want to trade. No, and and, <laughs> you know and ultimately we watched you come back. And get it all tenfold. Get it all back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, get it all back. And, you know, and, it, and it's something else I also told you. Mm. Log all of it. I don't know if you remember me telling you that. Like, mm. log who ain't taking your phone calls right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it ain't about revenge. It ain't about, but it's about understanding. Pay attention and know. Pay mm-hmm. attention. Yeah. Pay attention and know. Like, yeah. okay. I was at rock bottom because you went there. You mm-hmm. had seen the, t- you had been to the top of this shit, bro. You mm-hmm. got major, major hit records. You super cracking, and it went bad for you. Mm-hmm. And the phone call stopped. The check in stopped. It was like, ah, oh, we lost another one. That he went home, and this thing kept going. And I just wanted you to pay attention to that because I'm like, this is my guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like this is my guy. What What it made me do was like double down on the people that fuck with me for real. Yeah. Like as yeah. opposed to just being this guy that's out here. No, 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 no. You pick your tribe and you lean into them. That's it. Yeah. Lean into the tribe. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So man, shout out y'all, y'all brothers for being my tribe though, man. That's for real. Always, bro. Um so then I did a TED talk called Professor Cosine Presents How to Rewrite Your Life. Mm. And my speech teacher from college is who asked me to do it. And it was crazy because I'm like, okay, I'm going to just talk about what I'm about to do. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel blackballed at this point. I feel full-on blackballed. So I remember being uh, on a 405, and I remember just looking through my contacts and seeing how many people I knew. And I just started cold calling any and anybody. No agenda, just, I don't got shit, so I'm just going to try. One of those calls was to Julie Pilot. She was so excited, man. She's like, oh, my God, Cosign, I haven't heard from you for, in forever. Yeah. Where have you been? Where you been? I'm just like, my life is in shambles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got right to it. Oh, yeah, my life is in shambles. It's all went to shit. And she was like, oh, my God, well, why don't you come come talk to me? Because I'm not at Clear Channel anymore. Um, I, was, I was the highest ranking female at Clear Channel, and then Jimmy Iovine, pulled me over to Apple Music, Apple to, music yeah. to start a, a radio station, a, a, a tech radio station for Apple. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Went over there, and she was like, I was looking at you know everything you've done. I, I kind of feel like you're overqualified to be a producer here. I don't think you would be happy. But you ever thought about being an on-air personality? Yep. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Of course. And that was the beginning of me doing radio. Yeah, radio. And I still do that show to this day. I do over 150 shows for Apple Music. 
every Saturday night, 8 o'clock. You can hear it two hours. It comes on your phone. It's free. You know what I'm saying? Still, yeah. that, that's the yeah. check that just, hey, man, hey, thank you, Apple Music. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, in that cold calling, um, I, had, I had got Andre Harrell's number, and I remember from when I was working with Puff, that he was like, you know what, man? You remind me of myself in front of Andre Harrell. I was like, ooh, why you tell me that? Went to Andre Harrell. was like, you know, Puff said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remind him yeah. himself in front of you, sir. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and peace to the late Andre Harrell. Absolutely. I know he keeps speaking yeah, on people absolutely. that aren't Great here, man. man. Thing. But I took him to the Soho house for lunch, man, in my Jeep. And I remember I had this souped up Jeep with a two and a half inch lift kit. And I had to help him up in the Jeep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had to help Andre. And halfway through the lunch, he said, and you know what, young and I like your style, man. Yeah. I like your style. How would you like to come speak for me at my revolt conference in Miami, man? How about that? I said, I would be I would be honored, sir. And I'm I'm a little long-winded too, so this, <laughs> this would be perfect, right? Yeah. While I'm there, I meet Jeff Johnson. Jeff Johnson. The guy. The guy. The guy. The guy. Yeah. And it's crazy because I'm in my room with my, she wasn't my wife then, but we was like kind of having a vacation revolt conference. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like jumping out the bed, like I'm too broke for this shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm in there laid. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm laid up. We in the hotel. I've they never just set done us up. That before. <laughs> and we just laid. I've never done that. Before. And I just was like, hey, hold on, I can't be on vacation. I fucked up in life. <laughs> and I jumped out the bed and called too. <laughs> And I said, hey, nigga, what you doing? He said, I'm down here at the bar getting some bars from Jeff, which is what you should be doing. You should be down here getting some bars. I said, I know, man. Here I come. Here I come. Tell my wife, man, I'll be back, man. Get myself together, go downstairs. <laughs> I see Jeff and two like, man, tell him your story, man. And I told him, like, the light version, right? I was trying to, I ain't really know him like that, so yeah. I didn't want to tell him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, he man. said, no, nah, don't do that, bro. He cool for real, man. Tell him, tell him the truth. And I was like, all right, put the details back in the story. He said, yo, I think you'll be perfect for this show I've been working on for a long time called Man Cave. I would love for you to come audition for it. When we get back to L.A., that audition, probably got 50 brothers there. And so in my mind, I... I didn't know that there was an audition. Of course you don't know, because you're, you're in. Yeah. You're already tanked. No, no, but I did I You didn't don't have to that. audition. Yeah. I knew. There was a, oh, yeah, a two-day audition at Viacom. And... I remember once I saw all the people that were there and me being a Duke fan that I am, when I saw Jason Williams, I was like, there's no way they would pick me over Jason Williams. This is Jason Williams. Like, and I'm sitting there in fan mode. And there's all kind of brothers, 50 brothers. And I remember, uh, it's crazy because this this is actually when I picked up the Bible for the first, be raised in church, right? But during these conversations, we were talking about girls, we were talking about comedy, we were talking about fashion, we were talking about anything. <laughs> I'm in there, social butterfly. Then the conversation started talking about who's the holiest man in the Bible. And I had never really read it for real. And I was like, oh, this just happened. Like, I'm at Viacom. God put me here. I was just the man in the room. And then we started talking about his word. I'm light because I'm, I, haven't, I haven't read. And so I was like, okay, God, I'll never embarrass you like this again. And I remember that was when I first really started like reading for real because I was like, this is pathetic that I can't even hold a conversation about what's in there because I ain't never read. And yeah, Jeff, after all the auditions, he he picked me for the show. They mm -hmm. they picked me for the show. And now I'm on TV. Now I just went from being home broke two years ago to on TV and them saying, hey, coach, this episode, we want you to put the thing in your ear so you can read from Prompta. Prom Remember the uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> our, mm -hmm. <laughs> our brothers from London? Prompta. And yeah. I was like, Prompta? Yeah. And so yeah, the bounce back was crazy. After that, I started doing music for film and, film and TV. I started producing for Empire and Star. Um, I definitely didn't tell y'all that I was taking acting lessons too when I first came back because that was so weird. You know what I'm saying? Like just being in class, like my life is in shambles. But you got know. you a damn role. Oh, nobody, any, man. <laughs> you got you a damn role. Come Years on, later. little Danny. Come on. Years Come later. on, little Danny. When I, took yeah. you, when I took you back to the crib with me, man, we was, we was back home. They was like, that's little, that's little Danny. <laughs> little 
<laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, the hood, that's it. They don't know you by nothing else but who the character that's it. is. No, that's it. I remember being on set, Queen Latifah, Brandy, you know, Lance Gross. And I remember Lee coming to direct one day and he said, cut. And he was going around giving everybody their notes. He was like, you know, you, Bob, Bob, you, woo. And Cosign, you just keep fucking with they ass. Keep doing what you're doing. Because I would read the lines. If I feel like I had something funnier to say, I just say how I felt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know if that was okay. Yeah. Nigga looking at the, at the paper like, man, these yeah. niggas weak as hell. <laughs> Show you how to <laughs> to the side. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, get your Tim Tebow looking ass out of here, boy. And then when I saw that that, that type of stuff made it to the episode, yeah. I was like, oh, this is life. Yeah. Yeah. My trailer, my Versace draws. I was like, I get... Y'all bringing Versace Coach draws? Was, you want to tell them how you were stealing all the clothes? Come on, tell them, man. Who well, here now? You, you don't want to tell how you stole the keyboard, but you can tell us now. I can't tell you about how you, it. I how you the stole keyboard. all the clothes <laughs> off a of star. I see Coach. I mean, Coach, was that? You wore that episode, didn't you? Listen. Man. Hey, man. They, but, I, <laughs> but you know what, though? But you know what, though? Also, Lil Didi wasn't as fly as me, so some of my clothes I had to put on Didi, yeah, too. Yeah, whatever. Had to make it to the, whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm now, saying? That, that's we, the way to say I wasn't stealing. We, no, no, no. We, we all I'm had stealing. to do that. We I'm all stealing. had to bring no, a little no, no, something. For sure, for no, sure. I'm stealing. Yeah. Because they, I remember they were saying, like, get a Versace drawers back after the thing. I'm like. You want the drawers? So y'all can smell them when I leave? No. You didn't know the drawers went back? You can't take my drawers back. <laughs> The draws go back. The draws can't go back. <laughs> and I, Apparently. I, I remember that beer. Once they've been on my balls, they belong they to me. They belong to me. <laughs> the draws go back. The no, they don't. They, I'm not the, an actor. They're not getting my draws. They're not this, getting the socks. The, the, the socks. I didn't give the no draws, socks or draws back. Everything. Sure. It all goes back. You can't have my underwear. And you put your own nah. underwear back on. No. no. This, these are my underwear. They're this is not. my underwear what? now. What if I had a what if I had an active day and, and them drawers had a little bite on them, fam? Yeah. <laughs> I can't just leave them for somebody to goddamn. Man, it's, it's always. You know what I'm saying? They just, got a little... just take the goddamn drawers, man. Fuck <laughs> yeah. it. Anyway. Somebody come clean it up, but. <sighs> all right, son. <laughs> Shout out to all the R and B that you've done. Yeah, I want to. I want to tap into a record. Um, the if one, that's the, the one you debo from me, or no. Nah. No, let's go to the one. Because <laughs> I want to talk about that. Okay, well, let's go to that one first. So I say, you know what? It's time for me to really let my R&B wings fly. And mm -hmm. the way I'm going to do it is if Tank sing backgrounds on my single, and I sent you this record, and you said, nah, Coach, I, I need that. I need that for myself. And I said, but, but, but Tank, I was going to take my shirt off and grease myself. And get out there. And he was like, mm mm. And then I said, all right, cool. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna dodge him till he forget about it. <laughs> and then at, at the Revolt Conference in Miami, we was on a boat and you walked up on me and your muscles was out. And I was like, push your, push your muscles down, bro. Like, why your muscles is out? And he was like, Coach, I need it. And then by this time, my money still wasn't right. So I was like, I, I need it too. <laughs> I, I actually, I actually, because even if I do keep it, I can't. And like I can really, I need it too. Right. Yeah, here you go. It's only gonna go so far. Yeah, here you go, man. Here you go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nice. And then of course Jay slid on it. You know what I'm saying? It's, I've only deboed two songs in my entire career. So I'm one of two. And, yeah, you're, you're, <laughs> you're one of two songs I had to have. Yeah. I wasn't letting you li letting up. I wouldn't let Eric Bellinger leave the studio. Mm 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 mm. He tried to. Yeah, we, we locked the door. He couldn't leave the room. We locked the door. You're not leaving until you say, this is <laughs> this is your record. Only you knew. Oh, so, he wrote that? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that yeah. makes sense. Though. He brought that in like it was sweet. Yeah. Like he was going to play that for me. And, and it was going to be, and, and, and you going to get out of up out of there. Yeah, that's what I'm working on, T. That's what I thought. That's yeah, thought. yeah <laughs> you know, no, no. No, nah, and I don't be, I don't Debo. And I, this, if it, if it's, if it's, if it's nice enough, I'll just go do one just like it. Right, right, right. Yeah, it was two yeah. things. I was like, first of all, I can't reproduce that. Right. So I'm gonna need that from <laughs> you. Need that. I'm gonna need that yeah. from you. Okay. And let me tell you that record, bro. Oh, you know what? Can we play y'all game yet? Because then I can say no. I cannot say no names. Can we not play yet. the game? Yeah, not not yet. Yet. Okay, you, all you right. Play. That's the story. Okay, okay. good. Yes. Yeah. Only yeah. person that ever, uh, that ever ducks you on a record was Jeremiah. Jeremiah did duck me. 
That's because I couldn't get a hold to him. Hey, Jeremiah could, know how to disappear. I couldn't corner See, him. Jeremiah knows how to disappear. I couldn't corner him Boy, in a room. he played a smash. Oh, paint, paint, paint still, the city red. And he still ain't put it out. He still ain't put it out. <laughs> I, I saw, when I saw him... At, at the camp, at, at the, the verses, love, yeah. oh verses, at the verses, I say you still ain't you still ain't put that record out, punk. <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing? Where's the paint the city red? You, you can have it now, G. Like I'm, I, I said, you, you, I can have it now. Now I can no, have no, it. No, 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 I'm retired and moving on to so, another part of life. So cold. Uh, I was, I was trying to run him down, but I just couldn't. Damn. I couldn't that get him cold. in the same room where that I could really, cold. where I could really bully him. That's great. <laughs> right, 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 right. But right. You, was, you was close. You was family. I could bully you. Oh, shit. <laughs> but I was like, when we when we worked together on that, if that's what it takes, record. Ooh. I was like, I was like, what it takes. I was like, I need, I need, like, because we dug into the crates. I was like, I need that Michelle and Diego Cello. Um, you made a fool of me. Mm. I need that energy. Mm -hmm. mm. And he was like, okay, I got you. Mm. I got you. And and I was just sitting back there as you were orchestrating. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, Bongo. No, Bongo was there. Not just Bongo. Uh, Key, uh, Kevin Randolph. Kevin Randolph. Kevin Randolph. Kevin Randolph. Ooh. And Bongo, and and then you started just doing some scientific shit that I had never seen before, <laughs> making every making shit sound like shit I had never heard before. I was like, "What are you, what are you doing?" Like it was just mm. it was just magic. What you was, and I was just sitting there like, and I just kept saying, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> Yeah, all of it. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my God. Well, I was... remember I remember when I had a I had this note of concepts and I and it was like listed and it was like a couple little words about a con and I remember reading you some of the concepts and like the first two wasn't quite didn't move you, but then it was like maybe three or four that you was like, oh, okay. And then you went and wrote the whole song, bro. But you really helped me with the two kickoff lines. Cause I was like, I was like, I was like, I'll, 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 I'll burn in the fire, I'll run through the, run, I'll, I'll drown in the, yeah, something. yeah, if that's what it takes. And you were saying, no, you said no, I'll drown in the fire, I'll burn up in the rain. I said, were you nice with that too? <laughs> you got that on you too? <laughs> yeah. Yo. And then just it, the record was, no, mm. I just freestyled the whole thing. It was like. And then, and then I was like, and then when I just kept hearing your track, I was like, nah, I gotta, I gotta redo the vocal. And then I went to New York and I took that track and I just lived with it in New York. Mm. And I went in the studio and I just, I said, turn all the lights off. And I just, I just found a different, like that record right there. Bro, you leaned to that to this day. You leaned on yeah. that motherfucker. Yes, you did. That's an R and B motherfucking record. Yeah, that's a moment. Single vocal, mm. one track down. Mm. Who won it? Mm. And that's one of them songs where, like, when fans kind of come talk about the catalog, you know what I'm saying? You know, not the not the sing, not the shiny singles that we that we, but when they get into the meat, yeah, the meat potatoes, they bring real, that record up of real production, all real music, the time, bro. Yeah. That's For because real. because as you mentioned, those other records, those records are great, um, are really great production. Mm -hmm. moments for you in mm -hmm. terms of drums in terms of samples mm -hmm. um sounds that type of thing but that if that what it takes record is a is a great testament to you as a musician and just your musicality and your mm -hmm. ear mm -hmm. that's just crazy like like you being able to like you're a sauce guy too right mm -hmm. like you being able to walk into the studio while we're while we're writing and singing fucking with me and and we think we done and you like nah 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 y'all need a da, uh, you see that real quick uh, yeah. Uh, yeah and no 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 not just that pitch it up pitch it up pitch mm -hmm. it up pitch it up yeah yeah no no a little bit more a little more no no yeah yeah now put that in the beginning and then put it right here in the I was like this <laughs> what is that mm. and then that record gets however many views we don't even realize what's going on mm -hmm. that comes on in the middle of the show and people go ah, ah, ah. they just start right. going crazy I'm like this nigga co-sign and then I remember you coming to me one day and said I should have charged you 
<laughs> I should have charged you for that extra sauce I Yo. put on there. I, I wasn't even thinking nah, he, when he, I did that. You gotta chalk that up to the Mims record I yeah, did yeah. for him. <laughs> you gotta yeah, chalk that up to the Mims record I did for him. It was a 2.5. That's why I, I did a 2.5%. I did just a tiny 2.5% of work. You just needed your name on it. No, no, he owed us that. I didn't have my name on that record. You had your name? I don't think. So you owed us that. No, don't worry about it. Yo, that's so crazy, man. That's so crazy. When, yeah. when I heard that song, because you know what? It, it, when it comes to you, Jay, my brothers, it's not work. Yeah. This isn't no, work. No, no, no. It's just. This isn't work. We're in here. Just, and any way I could be a service to help elevate, that's just that's just natural. That's what it is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. it's just no, natural. And the music that we've been able to do together, man, is just really great records. Mm -hmm. That's what it takes. Stay where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. You being instrumental. The single right now. And slow. The single right now. Like you fought for that. Man. You sure fought for that. You fought for that. Had to. You fought for that. Because I didn't hear it until you sent it to me. That's crazy. No, and I not, Jay, and Jay not, didn't hear that first. No, no, no. Jay, no, no, no not, I did. I did. I heard it first. He heard, I heard it. it. I heard it. No, I, I heard it for him. But did you? No, no, he he wasn't fuck with me. I, oh, nigga, you didn't, I he, didn't he hear shot it. it down. Oh, he shot okay. it down. Oh, okay. So he was I've been, like, I've been hard not, on you for no reason. But not even shot it down on some that's weak. Right. shot it down on some like, ah. I don't need it. Right. It ain't, you know what I mean? It don't really fit where I'm going. I was like, mm -hmm. I almost, and almost like I kind of did it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With mm -hmm. the win we and here mm -hmm. we come with mm -hmm. a, you know, fuck you slide. Ah. Mm -hmm. But once we got to a certain point in the album mm -hmm. and I was like, I need, I need that thing that at this point they really know me for. Right. And yeah, we I was fight a, all the time about that shit. I was mm -hmm. about to cook it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I was about to just cook it for myself. Mm -hmm. And we, me and Jay were talking about that. And you sent me the record. Mm -hmm. And you were like, fam, I think this is something that... And I'm listening to it. I'm like, my ears are di completely different at this point. Mm -hmm. Because I'm looking for something to feel that exact void. Right, right. Before, I wasn't in that space. But see, that's important too for producers, right? Because, you know, especially... like. We get down when we can't be on projects, but we don't really understand what the art, the vision of the artist, and right. what that process is. Right. And so we just be mad that we're not a part of the project. But it's like music is specific, especially if it's somebody me, that knows. For me, I'm yeah. very specific, very mm -hmm. intentional with creating the body of work. Mm -hmm. So when that song came back around, you sent it. I was like, this, this is a smash, and I was like. I had to hit you. I said, Jay, did you send me this record? Mm. He said, yeah, motherfucker. I just <laughs> <laughs> I'm going Man. to cut you out. Man. You know, I've been looking for any little, little space to cut you out. told you, motherfucker, the record. And I, I want to shout out Lo-Fi yeah. and Will, Will um, yeah. because they were the ones pressing me. They're like, we know this is... It's got to be Tank. It's not yeah, for no, anybody Will, else. Yeah, Will was heavy on that. That's it's not crazy. for anybody else. It's him. That's crazy. And I'm like, man, that's my man. You know that's my man's, right? I'm going to hit him, bro. I'm gonna, Don't worry. I'll send it again. I got you, bro. I, yeah. heard, I heard the cry, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I'm just- So, in my mind, when I'm, when I'm reliving with the record, I'm like, okay, this is a smash. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to kill this. And I'm listening to the second verse, and I'm like- Jay will kill the second verse. Cause Jay be bullshit. Jay be bull. See, if I could sing like Jay, <laughs> I heard it because I didn't hear me on the second verse. Word. I honestly didn't hear me on the second verse. I heard me on the first verse. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Sit it on my face. That's my point of view. Yeah. That's all me. Yeah. Yeah. But then when it started, I said, oh. Mm. Nobody really understands the Valentine. Mm. <laughs> the Valentine is mm -hmm. this is the Valentine. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. pocket, the pocket was perfect. The pocket was perfect. I said, I said, Jay, this is you. You got to be on this song. Mm. I said, you got to be on this song. He's like, all right, nigga, whatever you say. I said, yes, you got to be on this song. Because literally for me, it became whatever it takes to get him to do the song. That's how much I love the record. So I'm right. like, you want me to sing it with you? Cool. Fine. Right. So, even so, though I loved it anyway. Right, you know what right. I mean? But it was never like, oh, and then tank. Yeah. So I got this record. The verse for me? So, yeah, yeah, no, it was, so it was what's the difference that. between stay where you no, are and finish, that? Let me like, finish. Because okay, okay. stay where you are was stay where you are is easy, was easier. 
Mm. Stay where you are was easier the way, the way we did that one. This one was a little different because when I heard him on the song, I was like, he's going to be perfect for this song, mm. right? As much as I love the song, I was like, I'm, I, I fit right here. This nigga comes in and do, does the song, and I had already done my verse in Hook. Mm. And he takes the song up a level. And disrespects me. Mm. <laughs> now you're offended. Now I'm offended. <laughs> <You're> offended. <laughs> now I'm offended. I love it. I love it. I have to. I have to. I have to pull the. Tra- I have to pull the session back up. Right. Hold on. Let me that. No. No. That. Get, put that. Yeah. No. No. I got. I got. I got to do it again. I love I got, that. I got. I, I got to do it. I got to do it again. Mm, I love do that. Do it again. Nobody's ever made me. Right, right, pull right. the session back up. So guys, I'm seeing something here, right? So I have songs with Jay. By itself, I got songs with you by yourself. I got songs with both of y'all together. I hear the spirit of an EP. <laughs> <laughs> well, my brother's just four songs. He be tired, man. Five songs, four or five. We can do it in probably like a week or something. But I'm I, retired from my own project. See, so don't don't my try to get own guys, albums, guys. I'm just and then we can let the people. Specialty projects are you know. You see people. what I'm saying? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do as much heavy lifting as possible so that you guys can just come ahead and slide and lift you know heavy. what I'm saying? Lift heavy, my brother. I, yeah. You heard nah, that here I'm on the not, podcast. I'm not we, mad at the R and B money EP. I'm, I'm not, not mad I'm at not, it. Listen, we're not mad at it. You know, especially as we wait as we wait on TGT to find it and get it together. Shit. Never. <laughs> Woo! Boy. Boy? As we wait on TGT to in the meantime, between time, you ever, you ever like you ever see like when when Jacques Cousteau when they like went underwater <laughs> and found them ships that have been sunken forever, <laughs> got all sorts of cool treasures in them, but them ships is never coming to the surface. Right, they Mother's will gonna, never they sail gonna, again. They gonna fall apart as soon as they come. <laughs> this motherfucker come back. Wait, down. so that's really so that's really that, huh? It's that. Just let it go. Let that's it go. That. That's that. Shit. Frozen. Like fro. I'm, let me say the joke, man. Let me. Let me I'm fascinated. Get the joke. I'm getting fascinated. <laughs> Why? Huh? And this isn't this isn't really me a, a that much of a me question as it is a we the people yeah the people the people want to know that people. what's the why Tanky y'all are brothers y'all are talented it's just I don't the patience it takes to do that the energy it takes to do that so was that first album a heavy different. lift Ooh. it was a heavy lift. Ooh. Word. The heaviest. And then mm. everything that comes after it to promote it and everything to him. Never got to it. Wow. Okay. It's just getting it done mm. was a feat yeah. within itself. Yeah. Back to Cosine. Back uh, to Cosine. Okay, all right. That shit, right. I, I lost five Lamborghinis off of that. I could have at least probably, oh. I would have had, to, so imagine what they would have made off of. Mm. I could have drove five Lamborghinis oh, if these eight. niggas would have just stayed on course. <sighs> eat, eat. Anyway, um, so Coles, yeah. as you as you as you know how we do in R and B fashion, mm-hmm. we have to get into your R and B mind. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, you spoke okay. a lot of musicianship and a, okay. uh, a lot of creative genius um, that is in you. You know, that's in your blood. Um, I need to know your top five R and B artists, any era, of all time, of all times. Michael Jackson. Mm. Mm-hmm. Stevie Wonder. Oof. Mm-hmm. Shit. Shit. Don't be scared of the other Slow three. Down now. Don't be scared of the other three. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Just do it. Just do it. Do it. R. Kelly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Chaos. Don't be scared of it. Uh Cause that's just as a Chicago, just so unfortunate, and that's a whole other. You don't even have to explain, bro. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Um. Damn, y'all got me on the spot. Mike, Stevie, Rob. <sighs> this is going to be a curveball. I might lose a lot of people here, but I got to just be music soldier out, bro. Bro, you ain't going to lose are. nobody. Music you lose no one out. on that one. You ain't lose nobody in this room. Music soldier out, bro. Cold-blooded. And I'm putting my brother there. Tank, number five. Let's go. Come wow. on, Tank with the fifth. Come on, Let's Tank go. with the fifth. Because if it was a fifth, we all be we close. All be- <laughs> we close it down with my motherfucking brother. You motherfucking right. What's that? You motherfucking oh. right, man. Wow. And, and let me tell you, let me tell you that I can't explain to you the like the the shock that I 
feel with people when they're like, nigga, you know Tank in real life. That's a thing. That's a thing all in together in itself. And that love and respect that you have from the true fans of R&B, bro, blesses me, bro. That blesses yeah, me, dog. That's dope. And it doesn't, it doesn't allow me to take this for granted. You know what yeah. I'm saying? For real. I yeah, appreciate that's my, you, bro. That's my top five. Appreciate you, brother. Um, top five R&B songs. All time songs now. Mm-hmm. Donald Jones, where I want to be. Woo! Kick it off. Woo! Kick it off. Because um, he left his baby girl a message. A message. Man. Oh, my God. That's a tough message. He left her, too. Tough message. Yeah. This is a curveball, but I got to put it in here. Um, when we're deep in the crevices, this is um, Music Soul Child, Previous Cats, right? I know that's like, wait, what are you talking about? But... It's a good orientation song for relationships and reminding people to love like you've never been hurt. Because mm. people bring a lot of baggage in their relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And music Soul Child on that song. First things first, girl, recognize who is with you now. Second thing, you can't blame me for how you were treated before I came. Wow. So it really pushes towards that. And that song was musically. <sighs> yeah. Ugh. Previous cat, love like you've never been hurt. Wow. Um songs and I'm not I'm not gonna overthink I'm gonna go Dave Hollister seeing you reminds me of wow all the nights I used to beat Beat it up (laughs) man get it yeah come on then I'm gonna go to my OG CT Mm -hmm. Carl Thomas I wish why not come on you you heavy on some Mike City you heavy on Mike City right now huh Shout, yeah. out to, shout out to the guy. To the guy. And let me tell you about the Mike God. City. Let me tell you about Mike City too. Yeah. Because when I was a co- when I was in college at Columbia, they sent me out here for six weeks in 2005 for the semester in LA program. And one of my big homies out here, it's like, y'all want to take you to show. I want you. To, I want. To, I want you to introduce you to somebody. He was damn near a Make a Wish kid. <laughs> A lot of moments, bro. They snuck him into the program he wasn't supposed to be in. Like, <laughs> come and finish, man. It was wild. The Whatever, Lord was man. smiling. Yo, it's kind of wild too. It's kind of wild too, man, bro. Because that the same teacher that hired me <laughs> fired you. <laughs> the same teacher that hired, I definitely didn't get fired. But when I first got there, he was so mean, bro. This man said, "I don't know why they do this to me every semester and put a hundred students in this class when I'm going to fail 80 of you. And if I'm lucky, two years from now, I'll be able to send one of you to LA to represent this school. But what I won't do is let anybody in here embarrass the school. Two years later, I was the one. Wow. And so when I came out here... Make a wish coast. <laughs> wow. <laughs> when I came out here, they took me to Mike City Studio. And this when JoJo... A guy. JoJo was a going... guy. Up. And so I remember Mike playing about five records in the in a row that made me want to stop producing. So I was like, I'll never be this good. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. He had that sound. He had it. And look, then he played one that was like kind of aight. And it was so encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can't do this. I was like, Wait, you know what I'm saying? And Everyone he, makes mistakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, right. I can't kind of do that. I was like, I got, I got to be second, dude. Wait, so you're not perfect? Yeah. So it's possible. That's funny. And it, you know what I'm saying? Let me know. Like the law average is the highest go. So anyway, so yeah, shout to Mike City for real, for real. So and, you got um, four now. I need song. one more, one more. R and B. Mm. Mm. Uh, Let's put some Jodeci in there. Take my money, mm-hmm. my house and my car. Mm-hmm. Uh, for one hit of you, mm-hmm. you can have it all, baby. baby. Cause make it love every well, time we do. Cause girl is worse mm. than Jerusalem. Mm. Cause what? Cause I'm an addict of you. And you know that I, I can't leave you alone. You 
got me feet. You gotta have feet on there. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. my yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. Him. Him. My okay. God. That's a solid five. Sex him. <sighs> oh, okay. Okay. We're not done. We're not done. That okay. was great. That was really good. Okay. You could end with that one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. It, bro, he was a master. Wow. He was a yeah. master. Yeah. Master producer. Mm. That's why I started calling myself Coach Vante. I was like, he's my hero. He's a ma- he was a masterful producer. Coach Vante. Um, okay. We're making a Voltron. Okay. We're making the R&B Voltron. Vocals, style, performance style, and passion. Who are you getting the vocals from? Mike. Mm-hmm. Michael Jackson. Ah. Mm-hmm. And if and if Mike wasn't available, then Whitney. Mm. As far as you can't do that, but that's fine. I'll okay. let you do that. Sorry. No, it's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> style. What you want your artist to drip like? Who? From like a fashion standpoint. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What's the aesthetic? They throw it on. Come on, man. Who gonna who gonna put it on them? April or May? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you know, who, you know, who, 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 who gonna put the who gonna mm-hmm. put the Lil sauce Brian on? Javar, who, yeah, who, who, who sauce? Yeah. So, are you looking for a, a artist, artist name? A artist that yeah. has a style that you yeah, want no, your with the have. artist. Like we yeah. we shouted out some stylists, and mm-hmm. who, you know, who behind the drip, but who gonna put it on them? This my I don't know if this is gonna work, but I gotta throw it out there. Rick James. Ooh, that what do you mean? Absolutely works. What do you mean? I tried to dress like Rick James once. Okay. You got to right. be Rick James to dress like Rick James. This, this, he was hurting for like a week. Hurt. He performed. What, what, what show was that? What was that show called? Lip Sync Battle. The Lip Sync Battle. Give it to me, baby. He Give performed as Rick James. No, no, no. The brother was hurt for like at least a couple of days. Bro, I had to perform in heels, bro, in the boots. In the, in the high boot. <laughs> Tights the whole nine. And it was... Only Rick can do Rick. Right, 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 right. Yeah. You realize. That's yeah. rock star shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, I like that. Yeah. So uh, Mike, Rick, James. Jesus Christ. Oh, I see I, Perf- I, I see where you're going. Performance style. Do, yeah, I had Not to at the that. Roxbury. Perform- <laughs> I had to do that. Who you want to get, like, on stage? Who do you want to take style? that from? Performance style. Style, performance style. The quick answer, quick and dirty, is going back to Mike again because... From a performance standpoint, yeah. But for the sake of this and moving it around, Chris Brown. Voice like Michael Jackson, clothes like Rick James, perform like Chris Brown. That's all yeah. over the place, too. Yeah. Chris might, Brown, hit you, he, might hit you. Yeah. With Chris yeah. Brown, Nine no back telling what he, Yeah, yeah. And I love it. I love it. I love books. it. I love it. Okay. With no problem. With, no problem. And with whose passion? Yeah. Whose passion? Whose heart? Whose passion? Uh, James Brown. Hey. Nigga, this is a killer. James Brown. Brown. This is a killer. This is a man as well. Huh. Mm. And, uh, yeah, all of that. I need that stank. I need that hollering. Yeah, that stank. I need that yeah. ugly. I need the... Yeah. Him, Does it feel good? Him as a music director, because that's like damn near my new twist, right? Like bringing my musicians in and really getting into the live show. I feel like... You know, being in the studio all this time, never being on tour, never really getting a chance to like really just shed and get my musician bag. I'm studying James. I'm about to do a whole case study on James Brown and that performance and the band and the hits and that musicality. I need that. He was the only one. I need that. James was one of one. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's one of one. Even musically, he mm-hmm. was one of one. one. Nobody's ever even thought to try to, to replicate recreate that. Him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, thought about it. You yeah, got to yeah, leave. Yeah. All of that alone. This man woke up one day and said, Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Like, music that... The thing about this music is it's going to outlive us, bro. Yeah. That's the part. That's it's going to outlive us, mm-hmm. dog. So the responsibility that we have to do what we need to do during this very short period that we have yeah. this opportunity mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. go ahead and 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 tap into what legacy is gonna look like for our family tree, yeah. bro. Talk about it. It's a huge, 
Huge responsibility, bro. Ass, For real. Ass, you ass, 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 You're so stupid. You have a little balance. <laughs> it's something, it's something wrong. And you know what? But that's correct. I'm glad you said that, though. I'm glad you said that, Jay. I'm super glad you said that. Stop. <laughs> because, <laughs> yo, it's so funny. We had a show last week. Take this nigga Damn, hold on, hold on. We had a show this week, last week, and I prayed before the show. <laughs> and when I was done praying with the musicians before the show, Phil smart ass said, "So you wait? You said you want people to see and feel God after we play ass ass ass?" And it's like he mumbled that as he was like walking up to the keyboard. I was like, <laughs> "Come on, fam! Come on, fam!" <laughs> But but you're right. You're Look, right. I put out my my <laughs> debut EP as an artist oh, last God. year called Truth Serum, mm. and hello world, hello world. Yeah. But, but look, Kings right featuring Idris Elba, mm -hmm. and when I when I was approaching the artist album, I was thinking about ass 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 and cake 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 and one time for the birthday bitch and Lil Booties Matter and all of the whole ratchet department. Yeah. You, you actually have records that are going to play forever. 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 One time for the birthday. One time for the... <laughs> doom, doom, Trap doom, back em. Doom, doom, doom. My, Monster production. And, and let me tell you something. That song was done. Trap came to the studio and was like, yo, I got this song I did with my homie. It's just... And could you could you put the beat on steroids? He played it for me. Could you put the yeah, beat on steroids yeah. for me? And he played the song for me. And I was like this. I did the same thing when you played it for me. I was like, man, what? Oh man. That man this said. This is 50 Cent. It's your birthday. Again. One time gonna for play the birthday every bitch. Every single day. Yeah. Two times for the birthday, bitch. <laughs> Fuck it up if it's your birthday, bitch. I said, bro, do you have a file for that, dog? <laughs> like, I'm so he went crazy. I, I could not. Work on that track fast enough. You went crazy. And that man brought his first platinum record to Jacksonville, man. Shout out to Tribeca, man. That's his first yeah. platinum. Yeah. Sheesh. No, no, you, you've done enough good in these streets, man. It's, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be, be all right, right man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, <laughs> your, your balance is good. But while we, you know, we're here and we're talking about the good you've done in the streets, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we also have this uh, important segment of the show. Mm -hmm. It's very important. It's called I Ain't Saying No Names. Yes, it is. And for the people who have just tuned in for the first time, mm -hmm. ah, it's a story that you tell us that can be either funny or fucked up yeah. or funny and fucked up. The only rule to the game is you can't say no names. Cool. Cool. This is Cosigns. I Ain't Saying No Names. I Ain't Saying No Names. Um, back to the stay where you are moment. Um, Nigga gonna put us in it. Mm. <laughs> Back to no, the no, stay no, where no. you are. So I wrote and produced that record, but the inspiration <clears throat> behind that record was me being in the studio, having a TV on, and um, <laughs> seeing a young tender. You know what I'm saying? That I used to, I used to see. We used to, we used to date. Now she's on Jimmy Fallon, and the first thing that I wanted to do was call her because mm. she was... With the fake congratulations? Yeah, because you lit on another level. <laughs> I, I, I was just, I was just, I you know what I mean? I just that. wanted to make sure you knew, I always knew you was going to make Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. <laughs> I always saying? knew you was going to be somebody. And, and, and she used to smoke weed before I started smoking weed, so I wanted to tell her, and you know I smoke weed. Smoke now. weed now. So if you want to smoke the, with me... I beat the so, allergy. So if you... <laughs> I beat the allergy. So, so if you want to smoke together... Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm here. Yeah. And I'm going through all these emotions looking at her and her glory. And I said, nope. You know what? Turning over a new leaf. S stay where you are. And that's where that line just keeps shining in my face. Like, Coach, it's certain, there's certain moments that ain't no going back. It was a moment in time. I see you shining, baby. I see, I see you shining, And that shit baby. drive me crazy. And it's... But just keep shining, baby. Yeah, right in my that. on some yeah, real play. I yeah, kept it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was yeah. I pushed P. That's incredible. I pushed P I by push not pushing sand. <laughs> you push, push P, P by, by not, not pushing, pushing sand. sand. That's a great collaborative bar. Church. Woo! 
you. And you know what? To a, to the, a lot of the fellas out there, that's some real grown man shit. You missed your beat, bro. Yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. Just, you just missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and what after, it is. And look, yeah. and after you stopped fucking with her, she, she was able up. to. She glowed up. She glowed up. She's able to find it. She's and you have to respect that. Got respect to. It. From afar. Yes. Because if you get too close, the you new nigga up. might do something to you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if I'm the new nigga. You bet not. Well, you know what? Look, look. This is look. You hear me? You bet not don't come yeah. right. Hey, look, look. This you part, bet not push in. <laughs> this is part two of, uh, of not saying no names, right? So uh, there was a situation where I did get too close. <laughs> of course you did. There's another situation <laughs> where another young lady was now... Because my sister said that shit. She was like, it's crazy. It just seemed like all women just glow up once they stop fucking with you. Oh, I was shit. like, you know, how your, you know how your sister just... Did, did, did that you, offend you? Oh, yeah. God. It hurt. It didn't offend me. It hurt. It hurt. <laughs> that, I couldn't even say that back. I just was like... There was no fight back from that. <laughs> She's like, that's crazy. Girls just be glowing. So anyway, uh, I see this young lady. She's in her glow. And in my mind, I'm like, enough time has gone past. <laughs> to where no man you know what I'm saying you should be able to tap back in with that yeah. and look and it wasn't even like I leave was trying her, to leave her alone coach I just was gonna give her a hug yeah. and say congratulations <laughs> and she pushed me <laughs> you said she punched you she pushed me she pushed you at the awards there it was oh you really tried to go in for a hug you said cause you when you said don't go too close I was like oh yeah cause because I went too close <laughs> without thinking about it she gave you that and and so immediately I just started scanning the room to see if anybody saw it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Immediately it was like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just walk, just walk, just walk, just walk, just walk. Get off me, <laughs> bitch ass nigga. It's not sweet. It's, it's not, not sweet, sweet and I'm still mad. <laughs> She's trying to do this to a nigga with his little <laughs> dress on. <laughs> nigga, what's happening? <laughs> Stay where you are. Stay, Stay where, where you are. Stay where you, you are. are. Don't Stay press in, Coz. <sighs> Don't press in. Don't press in. When she go up, or shit, if he go up, right. it is what it is. Keep it P. Keep it Keep P. Keep it P, yo. Let it be. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, it's probably better without you. Mm. Life is probably better without you. Mm. My God. Imagine yeah. that. Everybody ain't for everybody. Everybody ain't for everybody. And, and some relationships are just for a season. A season. You get what you need out of that. You get your, you get your harvest out of that season. They get their harvest out of that season. You take your, you know, you take your harvest and you go with it. Keep it moving. And whoever whoever that's supposed to feed next, that's what that is. Mm. Yeah. Thank me for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you say thank me for that. You, know. you suck. You suck. I bet you well, somewhere enjoying the goodness, huh? You welcome. Make, sure, make make sure you make sure you yeah, tell her to That's it. That's it. Cause if cause, you find if you find you a good one, man, they do some good things for you, those aren't new things. Just be like, whoever taught you that, come on now. Thank you. Come on now. <laughs> thank you. Come on now. Thank you. Come on, man. You, you ain't gotta say come it out on, loud man. just when you see Woo. see me in the club. Tip Woo. your hat. Tip your hat. Tip Church. your hat. Yeah, just, that's all. It's okay. Ooh, yeah, y'all it's okay. boys is it's okay. poisonous. <laughs> no, 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 man. Because you know what, though? I can say this, though. Honestly, uh, in relationships, I can't handle the truth of your past. So what that means is, let's just say hypothetically, you know, I'll use, use my wife as an example. Say we go to dinner somewhere, and there's a guy that, she used to do everything with. I don't want to know. My Mario Winans. Let me enjoy my steak. Let me enjoy. Let me enjoy. I don't. I. If we cracking jokes, let me and let me go home and sleep, and let me live and die. <laughs> let me live, let and, me die. live and die. Let me live and die. I don't because in past situations, and think about this situation. This young lady. Damn, I can't. I gotta be light on the details. But let's just say. Once we was good and and uh -huh. in it, we uh -huh. had an honest conversation. <laughs> I'm we were gonna in take a, a drink. We were in a park. <laughs> we were in a park, and I instantly had the boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard when she started saying the truth, oh, I'm right. sure I know this girl. 
<laughs> right away, I was in the park lot. And there's, because I remember the park, because I couldn't just be like, I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I remember being outside like, wait, uh, how, okay. how old were you and how old was he? Uh, and you did what? Uh, and you were spending the and all the details, bro. The details. Hey, man. I, you handle it. And I can, you can't go back. So a lot of brothers, y'all in these relationships with these ladies, worrying about the wrong fucking things. So <laughs> you got to know it's just your turn now. What's I, the, tell the music soul child song to listen to. Pre, previous cats. Previous cats. <laughs> I just think uh, that. Oh, fuck. Don't walk me in nowhere blind. Right? I want to be blind. Tank, no, I want to be no, mine. No, don't walk me in. But, but, but here's the, the What's the movie with the lady that with the thing? <laughs> Ooh, the I want to walk you like this. What's the movie with no. the... What's, the, what's that shit called? No. Oh, I want to walk you like this. Bird box. Bird, bird. <laughs> <laughs> don't walk me in nowhere blind. Because the past doesn't doesn't bother me. Just don't just don't let the past be be used against me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to need to know why a nigga shook my hand that way. Yeah, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Why he keep staring over here? That was a different kind of embrace. With, 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 with yeah, yeah, don't let trouble beat you home. Yo, yeah, yeah, that's so. <laughs> yeah, okay, I don't so, care. But like, listen, it okay, ain't gonna so change me, no dynamic. So yeah. let me give you this, right? No name part three. Right? Yeah, man. <laughs> this nigga has three no names. I got three no. I got the first ever on the RB Money podcast. Keep going. So Go. three no names, right? <laughs> I'm talking to uh, this young lady about a situation. That had just occurred, right? And it had threw me off because the handshake, the greeting, everything that you're speaking of. Because I was going to ask you for an example of what you're talking about, but now I realize what the example was. You are the example. <laughs> so I'm telling her, just like, yeah, you know, he was, he was with his homies. They was laughing, and I just didn't understand, like. That's just crazy. I've, I've been knowing him for some time. And she goes, Marco said, it only happened once. <laughs> <laughs> and when I tell you, when I tell you that was the farthest thing from my mind. I'm venting about my day in life. This is just my day. Marco said, it only happened once. All right. And it, it's not like how me and you are. I was like, wait. Wait. Oh man! Wait. She, she told on herself like the nigga on House of Dragons. She, she told on herself. Wait. I said, wait. You did what with him? <laughs> Yo, I was boiling. Oh god! Yo. Yo, I, I had to get out of there, bro. I had to to get out of there, hey, bro. man. <laughs> no more no names for you. <laughs> it's three enough. It's three enough. Bro, shit. <laughs> Traumatized, yeah. Oh my god, hey man, that's a great way to that's a, that's a <laughs> thank you for being here. Man. Oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> bro. Listen, uh, uh -huh. I'm, tank. I'm, 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 I'm not saying no name. Shit, I don't know my name at this point. <laughs> oh. I'm Jay Valentine, and this uh, is this, and this has been the Army <laughs> One podcast. This has been interesting. Um, <laughs> Uh, listen, Say man. Less. Listen, Yo, man. Um, <laughs> fuck, man. For 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 lack for. <laughs> <laughs> what is the blowback on this gonna be? I listen, like people gonna be trying to figure out the characters. Only thing I can say <sighs> at the end of this, my Thank brother, you, <laughs> is that we love you, man. For real, bro. Uh, you are really our family, and that's it. <laughs> we love you, man. Oh, fuck. and we will always appreciate you. And you already know the rest. Man, I, I thank love, you for coming. I love you, brothers, more, man. I yes. love you, brothers, more. And thank you for having me, man. Yeah. This has been the Army Money Podcast. Yeah. Church. Post time. Church, church. Post see, baby. E e e e e e e
R&B 